up, what up, what up? I need, I need that sports, sports encyclopedia. We West Steve Kim. Got Trent in the cut. Yeah, Trent in the cut. Coach your Yeah, yeah. Where you at, man? Where man? Uh, in the gym, shooting, I'm Durant. You ain't shooting, John Moran. Darnell, is the ball sack king. Yeah, yeah. Where you at, man? Where where man? Where 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 man? Where where man? Where where man? Where 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 man? Where 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 man? Where 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 man? With guys that that are like minded and and just are real and genuine. Better stay in your lane. You are fucking insane. You, dude, what? You just will not give this guy his flowers. What is up? What is wrong with you? Oh, you must have thought I was a bitch. Gotta get back. To letting the baby cry a little bit to see if they can soothe themselves. That's a bore. Issues get pressed so past it, don't get sacked like bags and baggage. Smitty and Jason Brown killed it, yeah, it's a wrap. We what the game's been missing, we switched it and filled the gap. I identified him after his third fight, and I said that guy should be a star. I'm so proud of you know the show, bro. Smitty and Jason Brown. What up, what up, what up, man? It is Tee It Up Thursday right here on the Coach AB Show with Big Smitty. Pound the like, subscribe, become a member if you're not one. We got a loaded lineup this morning. Legendary college basketball coach, legend. Very, 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 very dear to my heart. We are very, very close. He's a great, great leader of men. You've known him for all his viral videos that he has going after coaches, players, and etc. Sounds like somebody I know. Frank Martin will be here in the first 30 minutes of the show. Electric interview this will be. Uh, good, good dude. Great dude, actually. Great coach. Uh, turning around the UMass Minutemen little by little in a whew, tough situation. We're going to talk to him about that. We got Steve Kim, of course. And we have Achille, uh drunk by the turn. Talking live golf from Jeddah in Saudi Arabia as the live golf tees it up. Um, tomorrow, we're going to dive into that and uh, pound the like button, man. We need five. We need a thousand members. So become a member, man, if you can. And we need 50,000 subscribers. <clears throat> Let's get after it. Where will Justin Fields end up? <clears throat> that is the question. That is the thumbnail. Falcons? In Atlanta, where he's from, or the Raiders. I'm hearing the Raiders are making a push at him, but I like Aiden O'Connell personally. So AP has interest. I get it. But like I said, I think Aiden O'Connell is good enough to win there if you surround him with defense and run game. If Chicago indeed trades Justin Fields, if he they do indeed trade him, which it looks like that, it's trending that way, what is their plan? Another rookie QB once again surrounded by a bunch of average roster spots, no receivers, no O-line, and a shitty run game? Make it make sense. Sounds about right, though, when it comes to this Bears organization. It sounds about right when it comes to what the Bears have done since 85 winning the Super Bowl. Make it make sense. We're going to dive into what they should do with Justin Fields. Dan Orlovsky this morning on Get Up has come out and said the Bears need to go after Jaden Daniels at number one, not Caleb Williams. A lot of draft talk. We're going to be breaking this down uh, this whole entire offseason, especially with the UFL kicking in. We're going to dive into it. But before we dive into it, let's get right into brass tacks. And we got to bring in the one and only, the co-host extraordinaire, Naptown's finest, the Far East Side, LeBron hairline having, AR5 defending, Lamar Jackson sticking up four in, <laughs> Fox Sports' very own, Ball State legend, our main man, Big Smitty. Clap it up. 
What's going on, y'all? What's going on? Thirsty Thursday. Third, tee it up Thursday. Thirsty Thursday. It's just Thursday, and we turning up right now. We got the all black on with the white letter in me and JB. We matching again. We didn't plan this shit. It just kind of happened that way. So we feeling good, man. What's going on? Vincent Kennard, Julio, Coolio Jones. We live, baby. Vincent Kennard, clap it up for a new member. We need more members. Vincent's a new member. We need more members. We need members. Pop it in here. We need some members. We got to get to 1,000 members. Keith Smith, I'm about to block your fat, wobble body ass. What are you doing, member. Coach? What are, he you said, what up, Coach? Yet. and Cus, nah, 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 nah. Quit defending his ass. He need to be a member. I, I guarantee you he out here at fucking Cane's buying chicken fingers every single day. He can't buy a $1.99 Cane's, for sure. good. Cane's pretty good Shit. with that sauce and that toast. Oh. You know what we need to do, JB? We need, we need to do a members-only exclusive party sometime this year. You know what I mean? Like, we pick a location. We give people, like, uh, enough heads up that, hey, it's going to be in L.A., it's going to be here, woo-woo. They can fly out, whatever. We take care of everything else. Exclusive members-only party. Anyway, KG calls out. <laughs> hey, we can do it. Not in my crib. You got too many weirdos like Keith fucking Big Titty fucking Smith out there. That's Can't my cousin, that. bro. That's my cousin. Yeah, I know. That's your cousin. But we ready to go today, Smitty. We got, oh, Thieves by Law. There we go. Oh, okay, Thieves. Do it in Long Beach. You a Long Beach representative? Shit. Okay. Okay. I love Long Beach. I love Long Beach. Me too. Uh, Thieves by Law. Shady name, kind of sketchy name, but hey, we'll go with it. Uh, all right, Smitty, we got a lot to discuss on the docket today, but right before we get started, we got Frank Martin in about 20 minutes. Quote of the day, let's get you started right out the gate, brought to you by BetOnline. What up, what up, what up, man? The Real Coach AB here for the Coach AB Show with Big Smitty. We got a proud new sponsor, of course. For the second part of the year, and that's Bet Online. Continue to be your number one source for all basketball wagering needs, including pro and college hoops throughout the year. March Madness is here. Join us every Monday and Friday with Jeff Nadu as we will pick them and up to minute odds, stats, and trends. You can follow your favorite team's path to the playoffs with in game live betting contests and all the best player props. Experience the world's best wagering platform anytime from your desktop to your mobile device. Head on over to Bet Online today, become part of the team, and remember to use promo code BELIEVE, B L E A V, for 50% off plus welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet Online, where the game starts. Peace. What of the day? Let's get it cracking, Vic Smitty. Let's do it. Talent is a representation of stats, not a representation of winning. Ooh. You know the quote. You know whose quote that is. Yours, Frank Martin. Frank Martin. Let Frank him. Martin, who will be on the show here. We had to use a quote of his. He has a video that we're going to show him saying that when he pops on. But contrary to belief, have been kind of fired lately. So has the poll question. And we're going to continue that trend and get uh -oh. the chat riled up here and get the chat going. All right. Contrary to belief, strong minded truth tellers have very few friends. Strong minded truth tellers have very few friends. Okay. I see what you're saying. Because you, you always just keeping it real and you're going to, whether it's good or bad, ugly or indifferent, you're going to be honest. And people don't always like hearing the truth, especially when it's about themselves. So that's real. I got small circles, Smitty. I got a small circle. We're going to add some things to the show, Smitty, starting next week. We got Matt's Monsters. Everyone seemed to like his uh, his breakdown of his monsters. Yep. We're also going to add Smitty's specials, which could be a lot of different things. Can't give away all of those hints yet. And we're going to add Coach's Cues. Now, that could be me breaking down QB, barbecue, question, cues. Huh? <laughs> so we're going to add those segments in there. So I'm going to break down the college quarterbacks this offseason as they transition into the NFL. And then next season, we're going to break down NFL QBs week by week as I get to break them down on DV Sport, which I have. We're going to start breaking down. So uh, we got a lot of other segments we're adding. All right, Smitty. I like oh, it. Gosh. I like it. I like it. 
poll question. Uh oh. No sex one today. We'll stay away from the sex one. Uh, you 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 been freaky all week, Jay. Yeah, I'm freaky I'm, all week. I can tell you, horny. All question though today: Flip a coin for a chance to win a million, or immediately take a hundred k. I'm a gambler. Who's a, drop your question in the chat, man? <sighs> See, that's a real question right there. We got fire poll questions this week. Would you flip a coin for a mil or? Instantly take 100k. Now that's a real hard question right there. I don't know what you do to me. I think Smith's conservative. He's just gonna take the 100k, baby. We got Chick Fil A for a year. Booty with. I don't know what. Nah, I I'm flipping that coin, JB. I need to change my life because my life ain't too bad right now. Like, yeah, I could use some more money, but I ain't too bad right now. So worst case scenario, I flip it and I land on the wrong shit. I'll be mad short term. I gonna get at a hundred thousand. Ah. But I'll be back to doing what I'm doing, which ain't that bad in the first place. If I'm a if I'm a gamble, if I'm gonna do any sort of gambling or anything like that, I'm doing it because I'm really trying to I'm trying to change my life. And getting that milli would change my life. A hundred thousand, I'm gonna turn up for a minute. But you can spend a, you can spend a hundred racks like this, especially out here in LA. What you think, Jabron will say? Jabron, he a little bit more. Uh, he a little bit more. He a hustler. Just you know, works fourteen hours a day. He probably used to take the hundred thousand, in my opinion. But Jabron's coming on later on today, right? Is, is he already there? Yeah, yeah. He got here last night. He probably sleeping right now. When he get up, please see if he can hop on for like ten minutes. I just need ten minutes of Jabron. Ten. Hundred K though. See, I'm a gambler. I, I scared me don't make money. I, I'm pretty sure he probably be the same way. Well, we're gonna see. I mean, now, if you flipped 100k though, yeah, yeah, but I'm too old to be flipping and trying to figure I ain't got time for it. I need the milli now. I don't got time to go sell some drugs, get the hundred, make that two, make the two fold, four turn the mold. I ain't got time to do all that. You take the baking soda, put it in a pot, warm it up to this degree. Uh, boy, hey, I ain't got time I might for all take that. 100k and bet like the Houston Texans to win it all next year or something. <laughs> And blow all of it. And you know, you know what would happen too for you, JB? You would make that bet, and the Texans will make it all the way to the Super Bowl and they fucking lose. <laughs> the fucking uh goddamn uh Niners. Um <laughs> Shanahan and them. All right, Smitty. It's uh it's that time. It's that time. You know, it's it's your time to shine. Ooh, it's that time, y'all. Hope y'all ready, man. My segment, my brand new segment, Smitty said so. And this is what's on my mind right now today. It's time for us to do less talking and more doing. I'm tired of hearing people make excuses of why their lives aren't the way they're supposed to be. I'm tired of people complaining about not having certain things that they want in life. And I'm damn sure tired of people bringing up these genius ideas, but not executing them. You only live one life on this earth and it's not that long. Do not wait until you're old and gray and look back wishing you would have tried out that idea or built that business or played that sport, whatever that thing may be. The time is right now. Stop worrying about what other people are going to say because whether you're a billionaire with a, the perfect family or if you're working at a fast food restaurant with a dysfunctional family, people are going to judge you regardless. They're going to talk behind your back they're going to whisper to their friends. So at the end of the day, they're going to hate on you no matter what you do. So you might as well just do you and live out your life to the fullest. There's nothing worse, in my opinion, than wasted potential. I'm going to say that one more time. There's nothing worse in life, in my opinion, than wasted potential, wasted ideas, and wasted opportunities. So... That's my message for today. And if you think I'm wrong about this, well, guess what? I don't really care. I said it, so it's a fact. And whatever I say is a fact because Smitty said so. JB, hop back on. Had to bring something different today, JB. <laughs> Less talking and more doing. Well, that's me in general. Like, I, I, you know. But everybody ain't like you and I, JB. It's a lot of people. I'm sure you had homies even or people in the chat, DMs, where they have, they might have a good idea. 
You know what I'm saying? It might actually make some sense, but they figure out or they find some reason not to execute it, not to try it, not to take that first leap of faith in that first step. Me and you, like, we're the type of guys that we'll have an idea. We're like, fuck it, let's do it. And then if we fall flat on, on our face, we don't we don't lose, we learn. And then we go try it again and find a different way to do it. A lot of people not like that, JB. They'll have a great idea or they want to do something and they're so nervous about, you know, failing or, or, or care about what the next man or next woman is going to say that they just stay in the same place. And they say, you know, it's been 30, 40 years and they working the same old job. They ain't tried nothing new. And it's like, damn, I just, it, is, it can't be me. I don't like staying in one place too long. I ain't going to lie. I got to grow. I got to change. Where does Justin Fields end up? Mm. That's the question. That's the thousand. That's the million dollar question. Uh, thumbnails got him split down the middle. Is he a Raider? Is he a Falcon? He's from Atlanta. Have you seen the video of his of his uh, agent and him? I saw that video, man. I was. You know, when I when I see videos, I do deep dive. I go I go in the thread. Some people were saying that was an older video that they pulled out and they're trying to use it for now. I, but I don't know. I don't know. Regardless, answering the question, where will Justin Fields go? I think he's definitely out of Chicago. Let me let me say that. I don't think I don't think he's staying in Chicago no no more. Based upon what like what Ryan Poles kind of his his uh, statement yesterday and it's the energy around what I'm hearing. I don't think he's he's gonna be in Chicago, so that really leaves it up to what you said, Washington and Atlanta. I think Atlanta's the perfect play. He's from there, right? Ain't that what you said? He's from Atlanta. Go back to the crib. You know they're gonna they're gonna love you. You know what I'm saying? You're a, a dual threat quarterback. Who was the previous dual threat quarterback years ago that Atlanta fell in love with? Michael Vick. Obviously, I'm not saying you're Vick, but you have some similar skill set to him. They're going to show nothing but love to you. And there's a lot of pieces around, around that team that can actually help him uh, be great. I know you were very high on Atlanta going into the season because of the roster, because of some things that you that saw the year before. So Justin Fields goes out there. They put a good system around him. You know, B. John Robinson is going to be, you know, year two. Hopefully they utilize him more because that, that man's a beast. And I can see him really uh, thriving in Atlanta uh, in a division that's not like, crazy competitive either that's my opinion that's I, he said so. I heard ap ap's on him the raiders are making a play i think the raiders have a quarterback that can win um i think aiden o'connell can make every single throw in the nfl that anyone else can make he can really spin the ball spin yeah. it he really spins. it's crazy that my boy garrick mcgee coached ar5 lamar jackson and aiden o'connell he says aiden o'connell head and shoulders is the best spinner of the football of all of them, not even close. So cool. he's a spinner. He can throw it. Can they protect him, get him a run game? Got to get Jacobs back. Keep Devontae Adams. I think he's all right. I don't think you need to go swapping quarterbacks every single year. That's what the NFL is becoming uh, uh, right now. They swap quarterbacks every single year because they don't win instantly. You don't have a roster to win instantly, dog. You're throwing these Uber talented kids in there that quarterback position that haven't even learned how to play quarterback yet. They didn't learn in college how to play quarterback. Now you're just throwing them in there because they're absolutely a freak of nature and you can expect them to run around. Like, teach them the position. I don't understand. Here's my question, Smitty, to you. If Chicago indeed trades him and gets rid of him, what is their plan? I got to ask you, like, what is their plan? Because anyone with a rational thought process that goes out there and understands how this thing is created, meaning the roster, from top to bottom, salary cap included, plus who they have around the quarterback position, they have zero receivers. Yeah, okay, we, they got a decent one last year. He's still, in my opinion, a number two if they ever got a good core of receivers. Um, I mean, I like him. Moore is good. I don't know if he's like a, a dependable number one. And if you lock him down or double team him, who does he go to? I, I, they, they don't have receivers. They don't have a run game. They have zero O line and they don't have a very good defense. So like, are you going to start over with a brand new rookie quarterback? Let's say Caleb Williams. Let's just throw that name out there since he's been used. 
so much in the discussion. And you're going to start all over. That's what's going to happen. You're going to start all over. Everyone's going to bitch and moan again that they have no receivers. They have no O-line. They have no running backs. Does that sound familiar? To every team that gets a rookie quarterback that struggles every single year, they have no talent, JB. Wait till they have some guys around them. He'll never have guys around him because he's going to get murdered and he's never going to be able to develop and he's going to be running around. And, and Smitty, as you know, the more you do bad things, the more it trains your brain to continue to do them, even if you have good things around you. You've yeah. done bad for so long, it's too hard to break those habits. So when you're running around because your O-line's so shitty – and when your receivers aren't there and you don't have a run game and your defense is putting you are just horrific and they're getting fucking gassed and you're having to score points because your defense is giving up 21 first quarter points. And now I'm like, oh, I'm pressing and I got a rookie quarterback. Come on, man. Keep Justin Fields. Keep building around them. Keep those picks. I don't know. You can add a pick and all that. But if you're starting over at QB, Smitty. <laughs> What what are we talking about? I, I get. I, listen, I'm with you. You know me. I, I still believe Justin Fields can be a good, a good quarterback in this league. I think he's shown me enough flashes. You know what I mean? He's had game. He's thrown like four four or five touchdowns. Ran the ball very well. I think he can still be a good quarterback. And I I agree that I think building around him is the actual move that you should make. But being devil's advocate though. Let's say Caleb Williams is this guy, though, that the, the media members and analysts are saying that he's going to be. They're saying this is the greatest college quarterback we've ever seen. They're saying this guy is the second coming to Mahomes and the skill set is off the chart. We've never seen this before. Let's say he's even closely, uh, remotely close to that level of a quarterback. You would be crazy not to draft that guy, right? Like in, in high oh, school, you that. we drafted the whatever the year Mahomes got drafted. It's like if, if teams could knew what they knew now, that motherfucker's going, he's going number one. You know, well, what I'm who's telling you this? That's the thing you got to really, really dive into who's telling you this. Like, I, I want to really dive into who's saying this shit and who is diving into it. Because if you look at who's actually saying it versus the guys that aren't saying it, the guys that are saying that he's not that guy are guys with a better track record than the guy saying that he is the guy. Look mm -hmm. at who's telling who look who's talking. Look who's the guy. Look at the former GMs of the league. Look at the current GMs of the league. Look at guys who have hit on calling QBs a bust and who have not hit when they say they're the guy. And you and and I got to do a very very educated evaluation on who's saying these things cuz in my opinion looking at it around right now with guys like Merrill Hodge, who has been spot on, with GMs like Lombardi, with GMs like these other guys. I agree. I, I agree with those guys. I don't think Caleb Williams is that guy. And I don't think you can bring him right in and start him right away on a bad roster. You're going to then start to already diminish and just talk about how bad he is. He wasn't the guy. Blah, blah, blah. Like... <laughs> You're setting them up for failure, dog. Not, not me. I just told you that. You know what I mean? Um, so you, you think, you think he'll be more – he'll have a rookie season more closely to Bryce Young versus a C.J. Stroud. Like you you don't see him coming out there being even closely as great as a C.J. Stroud was in, in his rookie season because it's kind of similar. He took over a bad franchise, a bad team. They had a good draft, sure, but they they didn't. That's not a real loaded team over there with the Houston nah. Texans. Here, here, here's my it's, here's the it's, here's the issue I have, and why I say stay with Justin Fields. And everyone's been blowing me up, like, oh, you how you with a running quarterback all the time? You talk about they can't win and all that. I go, listen, the the problem is you're robbing Peter to pay Paul, though. You're bringing in another guy, the same guy who's less athletic, less athletically gifted, not as big of a guy as Justin Fields, by the way, either. Justin's a fucking legitimate put-together kid who's been in the league and started now for some years. The experience factor is huge. That is why I'm telling you to do it. We're so quick to get rid of a guy to bring in a new guy on the same exact situation. It's, it's called insanity. Like, that's the problem. Why? That's why I'm saying keep Justin Fields. And let's see if he can grow if you can. Because, dog, okay, Smitty, the only knock, the, the biggest knock is what? Every year. Oh, he don't have no receivers. He don't have no O-line. He don't have blah, blah, blah. So you're just going to get rid of him? 
How about you go get better shit if he's the guy? Like, I don't understand how fucking dumb some of these GMs are. Like, I'm trying to figure it out, but I've been looking into it, Smitty. There's a lot of GMs making calls that have never played the sport, that have never coached the sport, mm-hmm. who have been book-pushing worms, who are now expected to make great decisions on talent when they've yet to ever evaluate or do personnel evaluations. How the fuck does that make sense? They don't. And we're going to say, uh, eh, Justin Fields is out. Let's go. Bloop. Let's bring in Caleb Williams, who's to me, Kyler Murray-esque. Like, and when they're comparing him to Mahomes and these other guys and Aaron Rodgers and shit, I'm like, who, who the fuck is evaluating these dudes? Like, where do you see Caleb Williams in Mahomes or Aaron Rodgers? Well, they're looking at it from a skill set standpoint. They're not saying like that. It doesn't matter. People are drafted from a standpoint of uh Caleb potential, Williams has of a zero comparison. I mean, but think about it. Mahomes wasn't like again, Mahomes wasn't the number one overall pick for a reason. Like we we saw the talent in college, but at the same time, he wasn't he wasn't all that. But now we see what he is. You know what I'm saying? So my, my point being my point is set. Even too, even Aaron Rodgers didn't, you know, kind of he, he didn't get drafted number one. Like, so I think they're looking. They're looking at what the league is now. They're looking at what quarterbacks are thriving now. The Josh Allen's, the Mahomes, these guys who can move around but got freakishly uh, uh, freak arms when it comes to the power, strength, off-platform throws, etc. And just from a pure skill set standpoint, I've seen Caleb like do it all: big arm, good feet, can extend plays. He can run left, throw right. Jumps up in the air, throws a fifty-yard bomb from a skill set standpoint. Like on on air, Kayla Williams is fucking phenomenal. Now, will that translate to NFL when he has to learn? He's playing against the top guys in the fucking world. He has to learn a new playbook. He has to, you know, like he has to he has to lead a team. It, for me, is the reason why I'm not I'm not a hundred percent in on him is more the intangible side. I'm not sure how great of a leader he is based upon just. Certain things we've heard, you know, uh, throughout the year, um, you know, obviously the, the the every big game they've had, they seem to lose. You know, he's talking about going home and crying with his cats and cuddling and eating ice cream, watching Netflix because he's so sad and jumping in the stands and crying with his mama on national TV. And it's like certain things that I, I just understand a football locker room. Then it makes me a little uh, a little concerned of how the team, these grown ass men, are going to truly accept him as a leader. Skill set wise, the motherfucker there. I mean, I ain't gonna he, he on air on se- seven on seven. He probably will destroy shit. I just want to see how it is from a, a leadership standpoint. Smitty, uh, I'm excited as hell as our next guest. He's a, he's a he's a man's man of men. Uh, let me set that. Let me let that be, be said again. He's a man's man of men. He, he he's a he's a coach. He's a men's coach yeah. and a leader of men. Uh, the pride of Miami Senior High. I think it was North Miami Senior or High first, and then he went to seniors. Miami native. Uh, one of my favorite coaches in the world. Um. Our main man, Coach Martin, the UMass Minute Men's head coach, Frank. Up, JB. <laughs> what up, man? What's up, coach? Hey, Smitty, uh, great to meet you. I I, I obviously watch uh, as much as I can. It's hard during the season because I I'm a little busy. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but uh, uh, the fact that you you deal with JB every single day tells me what you're about, bro. It's, it's, uh, I appreciate you. It's hey, an honor hey, to meet a legend. Hey, it, you know, it's, it's, I'm tough. Skin. I'm tougher than his skin now. Hey, JB. One thing's doing the show with you, but when he's got to go in your man cave and deal with you every other like like that that like over the top. Yeah, you got to smoke a cigar every once in a while. You know about those down in South Beach. Um, what's up, culture man? I appreciate you hopping on here for a minute during the season. I know you're busy. Um, let me ask you: you are you are you knocking on the door? You got a shot at getting in this thing? I, I mean, we're we're JB. We're we're going to finish in the top. I mean, I, it's we still got two games to play. So to figure out where we're going to finish in the league is it makes no sense because you go zero and two, and who knows what happens. But um, uh, you know, our our so called net is about eighty. Uh, we've been able to flip this from being when I got hired. Our net was like two hundred and seventy. 
Mm. Um, and uh, um, and the way we lost the last game we played last year, we got run off the court in the conference tournament. Um, and uh, and this crazy new world that we're in, and and it is what it is, bro. Like like Nick Saban said it best when he said the dinosaurs didn't adapt. Mm. Look what happened to them. That's one of the best lines I've ever had any heard anyone say. So it's this new world we're in. It is what it is. I we had to you know we flipped our roster. We got uh, in, in a world where everyone's dealing with juniors, seniors, super seniors, twenty seven year olds. Um, I've got eight freshmen and two sophomores on my team, and and we've put ourselves in a place where um, we we've, we've had a really good year. And uh, uh, so you know if we finished strong. I mean anything's game because our number is pretty good right now. Your, your, your adapt or die mentality. That's, you know, that's a, that's a, that's a Mike Tomlin thing. That's a Nick Saban thing. I've always said the same stuff. Are you all in on this adapt or die new, new generation deal? We got to adapt to understand them, but we can't change who we are. Mm. You know, it's, if you go up to some 18 year old and you say, Hey, I grew up a, I, I know it's your show, and, and I do this when I'm on the sideline and I get in trouble for it. They don't give a shit. <laughs> they don't care that I lived a certain way when I was their age. That was 1970. Like I told a, a, a friend of mine that I grew up with that came to our last game, we both graduated from high school in 1983. And, and I, you know, we were, we were laughing. I said, yo, man, you remember we were in school? Them, them dudes that graduated in 1966 used to come talk to us. And we thought, man, who are all these old dudes, man? I listen to nothing they're saying. Well, that was only 16, 17 years removed. We're 40 years removed. So, like, yeah. they don't care. So the bottom line is you got to understand their journey, how they learn, the world they live in, but I can't sacrifice who I am to my core. And, Integrity, right? And, um, yeah. I got to ask you, Coach, um, <clears throat> we probably agree on this. Coaching is teaching, right? I, I think you, we know that, vice versa, teaching is coaching. Are you finding it harder nowadays, though? Are you finding it harder, I guess, uh, to teach nowadays with the NIL, the transfer portal, et cetera, when basically these guys simply can just chase greener pastures? Um, like, it's a mercenary business from what I'm seeing, from what I'm hearing. Uh, you guys got new semester. You got kids every semester across America, football, basketball, college sports in general. Um, it's a mercenary business. We're looking at Coach Prime and Deion Sanders and, and over at Colorado doing it. Is it harder to teach now because you don't either have the time, you don't have the investment, uh, or are you just out there coaching now and hoping they stay? I, I'm a teacher at heart, man. And, you know, adults, the game uh, gave me a chance to – to stay out of trouble. It gave me a chance to move forward in life. I refuse to, to sell out uh, who I am uh, just to benefit my salary on the backs of 18 year olds. I refuse mm -hmm. to do that. Uh, I, if I get JB, if I get fired, cause I don't win enough, but those 18 year olds figure out a way to find success. I sleep, man. I, yo, I'll go hustle. Like I used to, to make to figure out a way to pay my bills. Yeah. Uh, but if I'm making millions and all the guys I coach are sleeping on their mom's couch, I failed, man. I I can't sleep. You know, I grew up coaching in the neighborhood I grew up in. I didn't need the media to criticize me. Them dudes would come knock on my door and say, yo, man, what you doing? And, right. and you know, and so um, loaded question, I'm going to give you my cliff notes. And if you want to expand on it, we'll go. All right. As a kid, man, the, the education part and, and the NIL, where, where am I at with this? As a kid, the dudes that ran the streets, they did what they had to do. They made sure us young bucks listened to our parents, listened to our teachers, listened to our coaches, stay out of trouble. Now, once you were done, if you weren't about college and all that, then they say, I'm sorry, I, I missed the camera. Then they'd say, come here. Now we got to figure out if you're man enough to live this life. And, right. and it is what it is. But they didn't interfere before you got through that 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 stage in life. Um, and then as a school teacher, which is what pushed me out of school teaching, because I still lived in the neighborhood. I coached at the school I attended. I, I, I knew all the dudes. They started putting money in the pockets of the 15-year-olds 
to help them run their business because they just get tapped on the wrist. They don't get slammed like the 25 year olds. Mm. And, and now those 15 year olds are sitting in my classroom saying, damn coach, I can rock with you, man, but I ain't done with this math. And they pull out a wad of cash out of their pocket. And they'd be like, I got this thing going, man. Why, like, I don't need to learn this math. I got this, you know what, figured out. That flipped education. Well, I use that analogy because that's what's happening with NIL right now. You know, the, the worst run industry in our country is the airline industry. Why? Because you pay that you pay that full bill in before the services. Here, here's the thing that gets me about the airline industry. You pay your part. They don't say you pay 50. You pay the whole thing. Yeah. They screw up and you ask for their help and they cop an attitude. Yeah. <laughs> like, what are you, what are we doing, man? Right. Now, if you screw up, they don't give you a penny back. And, and you know, and that's, so what are we doing with NIL? Which I fought for NIL, man. I like this. This was prehistoric what we were doing, man. We, we you know, I understand. I come from it, man. I understand. I fought for it behind the scenes. The problem is that when you're giving an 18 year old X number of dollars before he does the work, he becomes the airline industry. Mm. And at 18, as much as I thought I knew, man, I didn't know shit. And, 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 and I needed those people that helped me understand. And, and so that's sorry for the long answer. No, it's uh, perfect. But that's my life. What I've learned in coaching and teaching compared to the moment that we're in right now. And it's trying to figure that one out that's made it really hard. So, coach, I mean, I mean, beautiful answer right there. I, I love I love the analogy and breaking it down, you know, uh, compared to, to the airline. From your perspective, then, like what is there what's the solution then? I mean, like you said, you, you're you're an advocate of NIL. You come from it, you didn't come from much, so you want players to be able to get paid for their, you know, their name, image, and likeness, but this current system isn't the way to do it. Is there? Do you feel like it's a situation where guys have to at least play a season and 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 and, and then determine you know how much they can actually get paid based upon their performance? Is it like have you thought this through as far as like what a, a real solution would look like? Uh, we should have been proactive, uh, and when I say we, I include myself because I'm under the NCAA umbrella. Yeah, but us coaches in basketball, we really tried, and they wouldn't listen to us. We should have been proactive on doing it in a way, not control. I hate the word control because nobody controls me. I have, I am contractually obligated to do things a certain way, but mm. nobody controls me just like nobody. And by the way, who the hell controls JB? Can you help me with that one? I can't think, I can't think of a single person. Yeah. But, but we, we live, we, where we live, man, we, we don't, we don't control anybody that, that, that and anyone that tries to create control is wrong. Um, uh, but there needs to be structure. There needs to be accountability. We're in education, man. There's a place for education. I, I don't care. I'm a Juco guy. I like, I transferred. I, there needs to be, we needed structure, man. We the wild, wild west. That, that don't work. Right? It don't work on the streets. If you go succeed on the streets, you better live in structure. If not, you're in trouble. And, and that outcome is not getting fired. I think we all understand what that outcome is. Yeah. And, and, uh, you know, and it's, it, it's, uh, that genie's out of the bottle. So we, 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 it got introduced and it was like, good luck. Well, I used to be against this because my wife who could not afford to come to UMass, she was an Atlantic 10 champion. She was a record holder in track. Her sport's going to disappear. My daughter's a volleyball player at Duquesne university. Her sport's going to disappear when we make these guys employees. Mm. But, but because title nine, once you make football and basketball employees, because they're the ones that profit, they're going to unionize. And now you got collective bargaining. And once that enters scholars, like, like all those other sports, they're in trouble. Title and, nine won't exist. Cause you don't have enough number. They don't have enough bodies to compete. <clears throat> but but, but it, that's why title nine don't exist. JB and professional sports because it's collectively bargained. So it's protected from, from all that other stuff. And so I never wanted that, but I don't think I, I, I don't want to speak. I don't have knowledge of this. This is Frank, by the way, Andy Reed, one of my favorites, because I listen to coaches that are successful, like the crap they say, because those old crusty, like, by the way, AJB, 
Everyone loves these new coaches that do push-ups during timeouts. Why is it the old crusty fat guys are the ones that always play in the last game of the season? It's, Winning. Yeah, it's unbelievable. That, so Andy Reid had a great line. He went against analytics a couple years ago, and, and he went for it on fourth and six. And, and the analytic guys couldn't believe he did it. Well, they got a first down. And in the postgame press conference, they said, uh, Coach, you know, analytics said you shouldn't do that. Like, how do you – like, he said – well, I don't really coach with analytics. I coach through my gut, and I don't know if you pay attention. I got a lot of gut. I, I, I'm like, this is – I love this guy. It's, uh, it's – uh, I know. tell balls over brains sometimes is a real thing. Um, I got to ask you, though, your fr good friend, I'm sure uh, – I know him pretty well as well. Rick Pitino just came out in the news, is hot hot and heavy, and, and basically saying that this is one of his least competitive teams – uh, zero edge, no toughness. You know, he came out and dropped them like you were just talking. Andy Reid did. It's becoming more and more prevalent. Have you seen an uproar because of the AAU movement, the seven on seven in football? To are soft parents creating this and 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 making this so hard for you guys that these are future recruits that you are going to eventually have to sign? Uh, are you seeing it at this lower level? And, and I'm I'm missing the coaching aspect and the teaching aspect of this thing at the youth level. I don't see it at all. And I see high school coaches allowing it more than coaching it. And I even see it in college and the, in the football side, um, probably less prevalent with you. You got 11, 15 kids football. You got 60, 80, a hundred, you're rotating 30 a semester. Are you seeing this becoming something new? I'm pulling teeth to get you to go hard and work hard when, when, you know, it requires zero talent to give effort. <laughs> yeah. That, the. the the, the biggest change, and I think football starting to live it a little bit because of the introduction of seven on seven. Yeah. Uh, because let, let's be honest, man. If, if the guys that look like me don't move the guys that look like Goliath yeah. on the line of scrimmage and you can't run the ball inside the tackles, you're not winning. I don't care what candy ass stuff you run. Yeah. You're not winning. You better win that battle between them tackles. If not, you're not going to win. And I, and I hear all this stuff about sideways. Come on, man. That, like, what defensive coordinator doesn't want people to play sideways? Like, like Spagnola. Uh, when, I'm, when I'm watching film in basketball, if you all you do is shoot threes, I'm like, all right, we got a chance. When you play at the rim, I'm like, all right, how the hell are we guarding this? <laughs> and, and, and it's the same way with football. Like, if, yeah. if you can overpower me in the middle of the field, then we're going to beat you sideways. But if you just run sideways, we're going to track you down and we don't care about the middle of the field. And, and that's that's where it's won and lost at. And um, but the biggest I, I sorry, I, I love football. I, I, I you know, I my, my bad, my bad. I, I, I started talking football. I shouldn't be talking. You get me on football, man. I, I, I hung out with football coaches my whole life. But um, uh, it. Here's the hardest thing. JB and you and I have talked about this back from the Artesia days, Miami senior days. Uh, we used to have one AAU tournament. And AAU ain't bad, man. AAU gives kids an opportunity to say, holy cow, it's okay to go to school in Ohio if I'm an inner city Miami kid. Like, I met those dudes from Ohio. They're cool as shit. Like, it, like it, it's AAU's fine. I, I am not anti-AAU. What we've lost is practice. Because now AAU teams don't practice, majority of them. They practice three times to play nine games on a weekend. And at the end of the weekend, everybody goes back to where they're from. And they don't, by the end of the weekend, they can't get along. But they go back to wherever they're from. And then they reconvene in six weeks. And they all get along again because they ain't been around each other. Back in the day where we stayed at one high school. And, and, and bro, you had to figure out a way to get along with dudes. Because you lived in the neighborhood, yeah. you had to ride the bus with them, you had to go to lunch with them, you had to walk the halls with them. If not, you're gonna be like button heads 24 hours a day. Yeah. And so you figured out a way to coexist and then win for who you practice for. We've lost that. Now there's always another pair of shoes, another AAU tournament, whether you win or lose. That's what we gotta figure out, man. I I like we we gotta. There, there has to be consequences for losing and reward for winning. Not just how many likes I got on social media because I 
dropped a video of me dunking a ball in layup lines. Like, like we've lost that edge to compete because everything is about uh, uh, showcasing an individual skill in a non-competitive environment. Uh, and that's where analytics and me get sideways. Uh, if I was the quarterback on your team, JB, uh, analytics on defense are going to look pretty damn good. <laughs> if uh, Tom Brady's the quarterback, analytics ain't going to look real good defensively. And right. so you don't control the human being in front of you. Like someone said the other day, Good luck blocking Aaron Donald and your analytics. It's a little different than blocking, you know, the JV guy that just got promoted to the varsity team. It's, 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 uh, True. You know, it's, it's a different world, man. That's, that's, that, that world of analytics. That, see, that's what I blame. Cause the world of analytics was created for one reason. Fantasy sports, fantasy sports ain't real, man. Analytics was created for fantasy sports, fantasy man. sports, fantasy sports is a game to gamble. What we all do is a game to win, not gamble. And 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 whether you win or lose, you got to go deal with it the next day. And so I don't know. It's complicated. It's a different, it is. It's different time. Yeah. No, I agree that all the time though about that the, the, the fantasy football, the fantasy basketball. It's all like told you, you know, like they these guys will go out here and say that Patrick Mahomes is the greatest ever already. And I'm looking at it, it's like you guys are all fantasy guys because he got you 40 fantasy points. You didn't watch a damn ounce of film though. So it's like you don't know shit. It's, it's crazy. JB, I gotta get you. I, I gotta like. I gotta be careful. My youngest is born in Kansas, and he is the biggest Patrick Mahomes fan. Oh, no. fan. So I can't go against my youngest. But the way you aggravate Whitlock with that, oh my! I just laugh. I just sit back and laugh like the way you get under his skin with that one. I think it's awesome. <laughs> hey. Uh, by the way, Dana and David said hello. Uh, the Pump, the Pump Brothers. Uh, I took Smitty to finally meet the Pump, so he got they got to meet him. Smitty, yeah. the Pump Brothers, and 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 Coach Martin, great friends. So, um, okay, I didn't know that. Hey, Coach Martin, I gotta ask you. I know you gotta get out. You get ready for practice. You're already geared up, ready to go, lathered up. The sweat, blood's flowing. Lathered up. <laughs> I gotta ask you: Are college athletics watered down? Like it to me, like. Anyone can beat anyone right now in the current landscape of things. Football, basketball, I think there's a shot. You can have a shot. NCAA is now even talking 14-team playoff. They haven't even played the 12-team playoff yet. It's like I, I believe less is more. I think they keep adding and adding and adding, and it just keeps watering it down, especially with being able to transfer and all these different things so easily. Um, is it watered down in your opinion at all, or are you still seeing the same? Here's, here's my opinion. The best used to be the best because they used to keep the best. Alabama, their top three teams where two guys were red shirting in football, like their their line line three and four were all red shirting. Yeah, they were they always had the best, and the bottom couldn't have enough guys to deal with those guys. Well, what's happened? Those backups here have transferred here, and the good ones here have transferred here. So what's happened is the bottom's gotten better, and the top has gotten lower. So yep. it's kind of all squeezed together. And that's 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 what my opinion is on that. And parody, JB. Parody, JB. Yeah. That's, and that's why I call it watered down, though. I think it's the same yeah, thing. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. that's kind of what it is, in my opinion. Um oh, real quick. And and, 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 and and one other thing. I get back to my point. All we do is reg NFL, NBA, college athletics, we regulate practice time. Like we're hurting these dudes mm. because we're practicing. Like, are you kidding me? These guys play 190 games in a high school year between AAUs with travel, with practice with this team, practice with that team. And then they get to college and we're like, no, nope, no, nope, nope, you can't practice them. They're like, playing with 1,007 on seven reps. What are we doing, man? Like, like, like who kept us? Smitty, how old are you? I'm 30, but I did do two a days. I, I'm right, right off the cuff. Because right, yeah. I'm, I'm going somewhere with this. Because this here, I got like I kill our players with this one. All of us that grew up playing on the asphalt courts, yeah, you learn not to fall down. That crap hurts. Yes, these guys they just flop and fall down anytime somebody takes a deep breath next to them, and and it's like that that drives me nuts. But if we weren't with our teams. Like, we all went to school. The reason you're in college is because you actually went to high school and did schoolwork. Right. So now you get to college. Well, that's why you're in college, because you, like, you're used to doing schoolwork. 
we used to have to practice with our high school teams, travel with our AAU teams, all that stuff. And then we were at the park from sun up to sundown. Yeah. Now they get to college and we're like, no, you can't practice them. <laughs> I, I'm like, like, hey, I would bring, if I coach again, if I'm going to come speak to your guys, I'm going to bring a fucking metal slide. Remember the metal slide? And you, you oh. just, in the hot summer. Yeah, hot as hell, don't it? Lay down, back just burns up. That's what these kids need, Coach. Oh. Uh, hey, Coach, before you leave, I know you got to get ready to practice. Please tell this youngster, my young co-host, because we've done top of the world and bottom of the barrel, meaning our top fives and top and our bottom fives are overrated guys. This guy continues to put Bill Russell on these bottom of the barrel lists. Can you tell this young Padawan how great he was? Hold on, hold on. Before you jump in, Coach, just to give some context, nothing but respect for Bill Russell. Like, <laughs> like without Bill Russell doing what he did, it wouldn't be basketball today. Even outside the court, as a black man, I understand there's so like he he paved the way in so many so this is nothing but respect. But when when I remove emotions, I look at the era, the time he played in, the players he was playing against, the uh, the amount of teams that, that there were then versus now. I look at the skill set of today's big men and players now. Like, what would Bill Russell do against a Shaq? I don't know. Like, I, I get it's Bill Russell, so we so I think everyone kind of tiptoes around certain guys who are legends. And I get it. Same thing here. That's why I'm, I'm giving you some some context. But when we just keep it real, Bill Russell wouldn't like wouldn't uh, do nothing against a Shaq. If we just, yeah, if we just like, life threatening yeah, coach, yo, bro, bro. Hakeem Olajuwon. Like, come on, y'all. Now, now I'm gonna put you in this generation Z, Gen Z, whatever this young generation. I, I'm so old that my generation doesn't even exist anymore. But <laughs> these young bucks tell me Shaq couldn't play in today's NBA, and I just <laughs> laugh. And I just laugh. I like know. Shaq would take these six six centers and devour. He just eat them, and then he dunked the ball. And they say, "Well, you can't guard the ball screen. It's okay. I'm going to eat both of them at the same time, and then tell them to guard me on the other side." It, like, like, who's your who? Who's the best football? Give me who you think's the best football player. Quarterback, um, quarterback, because I'm a big believer. You got to be good in the middle, point guard, center in basketball. Best quarterback. I mean, you you got to go with Brady. My favorite quarterback is Peyton Manning, but Brady is the goat because of okay. how much he's won. Yeah. Why would you put Brady number one? Because the the clutch factor and how much he's won. I get JB, that. I'm reeling him in, JB. I got I know say, how, how many times he's won. I know you're gonna say. I you know it. what this is? Eleven. You know, you know who's got this? Bill. I. I so I. I stay no, my case. See, I don't time out though, coach. Time I out. My case Most people don't say Bill Russell's the goat though. We we say Michael Jordan. You hear okay. Kareem. You hear LeBron now. You hear Magic. And none of these guys have even got close to eleven rings. So it can't just be rings, coach. Because it can't be rings. You know why? Why? Because Russell won. He didn't dominate with individual stats. Mm. Russell won. You know who Russell defended? The Wilt only Chamberlain. guy over the only guy that ever scored 100 points in an Wilt NBA Chamberlain. game. And Wilt that's would what put that. numbers on Bill. Now they would lose. They would lose because but the Celtics were loaded. But, but Wilt that's, would. That's, but that's who he had to defend. So when I hey, hear people say he's time MVP, 12 time All Star Bill Russell, stop. Yeah. Smitty, stop. Hey, coach. JB, I got to, before you let me go, I got to hit you because you're obviously in Southern California and we talked about the landscape of college athletics. And when we were, when and I'm like, Smitty, you're still young. I'm lumping JB in my age group. When we were young, Sonny Vaccaro used to run grassroots basketball. He was the uh, unappointed governor of grassroots basketball. There was civility. He stepped away. Grassroots basketball got wild. And, and Sonny Vaccaro and a guy named Ed O'Bannon, who was JB's guy, they started this whole thing. They're the ones that started this whole change like this thing and because of those guys we're dealing with whatever moment we're in right now which i it's wild it, this shit, it's wild but it's okay it's all right i this hey and i'll let you go on this because the pump brothers are my, like brothers man we they used to stay at my house when i lived in the hood in miami and they come in and she's like frankie how do you live here i'm like come on man what, what do you mean how do i live here just sleep on the bed it's clean it's um but it's it's um as I try to figure out the moment we're in right now and how to continue to reach young people, uh, what I'm doing 
It beats landscaping. It beats working at a bar, making a hundred bucks and getting shot at. It beats all that stuff I did when I was young. Now, if I ever got to go back and do that stuff to survive, I will. I'd be a first round knockout these days. I used to be able to stay in there to the eighth round, but, but, but at the end of the day, I'm, I'm living a dream, man. I, I get to coach basketball and I get to try and impact the lives of young people so they can find success. And, um, you know, I'm, 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 uh, I'm all in and I'm excited, but thanks to Sonny and, and, and Ed and uh, hey. oh, he's just finest baby. Hey, Sonny used to be at, uh, Artesia all the time with Wayne Marino, man. It was crazy that people used to come up there, brother. Oh, like shit. I was like, God, I'm sure you used to be up there as well. Hey, I start, I do a quote of the day every day. My quote today is a video of you. Oh, boy. Talent is a representation of stats, not a representation of winning. Um, uh, I thought it was great when you said that. Uh, talent is a representation of stats, not a representation of winning. If you're really like, if whether I coached Michael Beasley or this table coached Michael Beasley, he's going to score 27 points a game of college. I, I said that same thing, coach. I said, hey, Raheem Boyd, I didn't have to, I didn't teach him how to jump cut. He hurdled the guy, jumped the guy, and went 99. I did diddly shit to do that. He came out yes, the you wall. Did. You, you clapped. You're <laughs> hey, hey, before you before you leave, you miss you miss Manhattan? You miss K-State? Uh I do, man. That that place was you lived out there, man. Uh th them folks out there are like pure. They you know they love they love people they love life and they love their sports they 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 uh, uh they support those communities those JUCOs the Manhattans Wichita Kansas they they support those universities it's uh um you know I still have dear friends over there uh, we communicate regularly I haven't Coach Snyder is like like a mentor to me the fact that that I, I don't mean to get uh, sappy on your show here but the fact that that I got placed by God, whoever, to be the head coach at K-State, a place that growing up in the inner city of Miami, I never thought I'd be. And to have Bill Snyder become a mentor to me, like a guy I can call to ask for advice. When I became a head coach, he's he's riding shotgun with me, walking me through every decision I got to make uh, is phenomenal. So, yes, that's that's uh, I tell everyone all the time. That's where my that's where my college basketball career was born. And um, uh, wow. and uh, I'll never forget the people there. I put a tweet out the other day because uh, somebody put something out about Michael Beasley, and I saw it, and you know, and I and, and somebody responded saying thank you. I said no, thank you, because you guys gave me a chance. You had my back. You circled the wagons, and when I screwed up, you protected me, which is what life's about. Now, when people screw up, we blame them. We we got to protect our own, man. We got to teach them, but we got to protect our own. I love that. Man, coach. I love man. that. Coach. Last thing, I, I, I got to, this is a completely off, off the grid. I got to ask you this last thing, though. Should court storming be banned in your opinion? Yes or no? Like. <laughs> the youngsters, coach. I, I, like, like, I've been part of both. For, for my team and against my team. Nobody's ever been hurt, man. Uh, I know. Nobody's ever been hurt. I nobody know. nobody's ever now are times different are people braver that you know they get into stupid stuff yeah now now i'm gonna say something and this is not i learned that from, i learned this from bill self because my first year as a head coach we beat kansas at k-state for the first time in 25 years and and it was thirteen thousand people on the court and not the students thirteen thousand on the court and bill self i'll never forget late in the game uh uh, he kind of motioned at me that forget this handshake stuff today. And he kept his whole team like on the bench mm -hmm. so that they, from the bench, they can find a, a little tunnel or whatever to head to the locker room with security. Uh, and I learned that from Bill. I did that one time when our court got stored, we we're going to lose. And we were like, I don't know, fifth in the country or something. I can't remember who it was. And I, I told my team, yo, as soon as that buzzer sounds, come to the bench. Don't, don't stay on the court, come to the bench. And, uh, but um, if you stay on the court, Hey, by the way, that game, uh, the officials got trampled. I, I said, nobody got hurt. The, one of the officials got trampled, Ted Hillary, who is the greatest of all time. So I didn't know that had happened till after the game. So and I call them and they're driving from Manhattan back to Kansas city, all three in the car. And I call them and I said, yo, Ted, you okay? 
and they had me on speakerphone and the guy driving the car, one of the officials said, Steve Olson, he said, okay. He was laying in the ground. He was in heaven. Frankie's on a college campus. I'll leave it at that and you guys can figure out what he meant. Ah! Hey, culture, man, love you. I'll talk to you soon. Go out a hell of a practice and uh, good luck the rest of the way. I hope you get in. Yo, JB, I'm coming out to see you, bro. Hell yeah, let's do it. Right. I'll be there. Pleasure meeting you, coach. Same here, Smitty. All right, brother. I love Legendary it, Frank Martin. Clap it up. Great man. Great energy. Great energy. Great We got, a, great we got a very, uh, we got somebody that wants to come on and tell his story about interviewing Coach Prime yesterday. Big Matt McChesney has something to get off his chest with all the social media hate that is going on. We're going to dive into that. Matt's going to make a special appearance on a Thursday right after this commercial break. And then we got Steve Kim and we got a Killy with the Live Golf Tournament. We'll be right back in five. It was, it was a good time. How you been, man? I miss you, man. I ain't seen you in a minute. Yeah, no, I'm good. I'm good. Just staying out the way. Um, right now, we're trying to make a, a cha another championship run. We have um, we have the uh, San Antonio uh, Gunslingers this week, and um, they're a pretty good team. They're the number one team in the league right now. They got a good quarterback. They uh, got a good team. And so um, this week's going to be a tough one, but hopefully we come out with a victory. But um, other than that, I've just been working out, staying in the gym, um, just throwing the football around. You find in that weight room, huh? Hey, Malik hated the motherfucking weight room. Now, don't get it twisted. Okay. Huh? Malik hated that weight room, dog. He yeah, yeah, yeah. No, for sure. I uh, no, I got. I'm. I think I'm up to like two hundred five right now. So, uh, you look, I know. I saw you look bigger. How, now, how yeah. old are you now? I'm 25. I had a birthday July 7th. Um, I just oh, happy birthday. I, happy belated birthday, my guy. I appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah. Damn, 25. I'm feeling old as shit. <laughs> Damn. Hey. I talked to your pops uh, a couple weeks ago, man. I'm glad he's doing well. Uh, yeah. Hope your mom doing well. Um, yeah, everybody's good. They're still back here in Cali, right? Yeah, everybody's out in LA. Yeah, my brother just um, graduated. He's going to uh, he's going to shorter uh, university over here in Georgia. So, oh, he's, really? Uh, yeah, he's starting college and stuff like that. Oh, yeah, so. yeah, I've seen cats are shorter. Um, yeah. My boy Big Smitty right here he played at Ball State. He, he he used to be so he used to be on the show when okay. you was on. Um, Actually, when you was on this show right here, okay. your relationship like with day. Jason Brown? Uh, I just want to say thank you for having me on the show, first and foremost. But my relationship with Coach Brown, um, he's more or less just like a bigger, older brother to me. So when you were on that show right there, yeah. Big Smitty right here was in behind the scenes working that shit. Okay, that's cool. That's he, right. He's still at Fox. He's still at Fox and shit right now, but... Okay. Uh, cool. And then I went on afterwards, and and Whitlock called me an alcoholic. But you know that's a whole nother ball game. <laughs> <laughs> nice to officially meet you, though, my guy. Like I said, I mean, Debbie, you know, obviously watched the show, been knowing JB for the last couple of years, and like I said, I was at Fox, like he said, when you were there. But uh, excited to finally have you on, and uh, I know the fans couldn't wait uh, once we announced that you were coming on. So excited to have you on, my guy. No, for sure. I, thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. Yes, sir, man, for sure. Oh, so Jay I, Henry's in the chat. Jay Henry's Henry back. What up, Jay? <laughs> hey, Jay, Jay posted a comment earlier, Malik. He was like, people don't know. They 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 don't that's why I'm doing this show, Malik. When you get back in town, I'm gonna have you at the house, man, and gotta and we'll we'll cook it up and have you on the show. Carlos Thompson's coming over today to do a little episode. He's playing arena ball here in San Diego. Yeah, yeah. No, he's with the uh, strikers right now. Yeah, uh yeah. strike force or whatever they're called. Yeah, yeah that's San Diego team. And and uh and my, one of my one of my guys is the head coach there. Um, so they're gonna come down today and uh and I went to a few games. Me and Eric Weddle, former Charger, uh, Ram, Super Bowl champ. We went to a couple games a couple weeks back. But uh, okay, he's gonna come down. But we're gonna uh, I'm doing the show, man, because a lot of people don't realize like how they manipulated and massaged this uh this documentary. You've been in a couple of them. Florida State obviously did something similar when you were there. Yeah. Netflix comes to us when we're there. Uh, you know, we already know the, the outcome of that shit, but people don't realize how they massage that type of shit. And that's why I'm doing this last chance true tell all. Yeah. And uh, Jay popped in the chat earlier. It was like, people don't realize, man, Malik, Malik was the most loved player in the locker room and shit like that. And I told uh, me and Smitty, we did an episode last week. I want to show you something that um, that I said about you right here. 
In yeah. Independence, Kansas. You went from the number one quarterback in California going to Florida State at a... By the way, he was an early grad. He's 17. By the way, nobody's seen this at all. Any, by anyone in America hasn't seen this yet. Oh, yeah, kid. And now you're in Independence, Kansas, where there's no pussy, no food, cold weather, in the cold. You're up at four in the morning getting motherfucked by me, and I'm not allowing you to have any Xanax. Completely opposite from where you just came from. Literally night and day. I mean, just think about everything. Pissed, so yeah. now everybody wants to talk shit about Malik Henry, but you really don't understand. Put yourself in a 17-year-old's shoes right. that went from the number one quarterback up here to Florida State up here to getting booted, and now you're at Independence, Kansas in a fucking town of 9,000. I don't think people realize that shit, Malik. I don't think un people understood that shit. Uh, people don't know when we do this show, like your dad and you, you arrived on campus. It's like January, fucking 20 degrees below. You're in this cafeteria. I see Malik's whole soul leave his body. What up, what up, what up? Let's get after it. Um, we back, we back. We back. What's going on? TJ Too Nasty, Bobby Beauty, South Coast 650. I see you in the chat. We got a new member, Chasing G3K. Shout out to G3K. Who else we got, man? Where the ladies at in the chat? I saw Jazzy Jazz here earlier today. Where are the ladies at in the chat? Do we got at least five ladies in here? We checked out the analytics. We're like 97.3% men and 2.8%. 87% women. We got to get that to at least 95.5. Can we make it happen, ladies? Let's make it happen. We got Matt joining us for a few minutes before Steve Kim hops in at 7.30. He's going to jump in right now real quick. Uh, we need some more members. We need we, – man, we got the most – we have the realest, the rawest interviews of anybody. We don't even write down questions. Now we just, we just ad lib it. Top of the head, JB. Like, whatever comes to the top of your mind is what we do. Like, how this show isn't, like – the biggest show? I don't know. Slap dicks hold us down is what I think. That's all that matters, man. The real must tune in. That's all that matters, JB. Don't, don't even trip, man. When you work hard, you keep the faith, and you move in the right motion, the right direction, things will fall in line. It's always been that way in my life, so I don't even trip no more. I don't even panic. I don't worry. I just let things happen the way it's supposed to. Great interview by Frank Martin. Coach Martin, uh, great dude, man. Uh Great dude. Um, can't tell you enough. We talk all the time. Uh, one of the best. I hope he gets in a tournament so bad, man. Um, like, he's one of the guys I uh, – not really. I can't say that. But he's one of the guys I would like to, to, the NCAA just to have, like, let everybody in since you're already trying to let everybody in. Smitty, before Matt jumps on, do you realize that they're having conversations to approve a 14-team playoff already and they haven't even had the fucking 12-team playoff yet? Yeah, that's a little that's a little different. That's a little wild. That's what are we wild. doing? Like, I'm trying to figure out we haven't even had the 12 team playoff yet, and you're about to do 14 already and approve it. I guess as a business, though, you do have to be proactive in your conversations, regardless if you do it or not. Like, you and I should be discussing 2025 plans about this show right now. Hey, guess who gets in with that with that mindset? Guess who's now. Now, guess who we have to let in? Now cool. we're going to have to see. Now I get to see Georgia play Army. <laughs> I get to see Georgia play fucking. <laughs> I get to see Georgia in the first round. They're going to go. They're, they're going to get a bye. So the second round, Georgia's going to get fucking Tulsa. No, yeah, I don't. Yeah. I don't think it would work that way. I think it'd be like four number one seeds that would all get like a bye, and they would make some of the bad teams play each other early to kind of like knock each other out. Yeah, again, we're, we're we're making up scenarios. Let's special guest joining the show on a Thursday because he had an epic, great interview yesterday. If you haven't seen it, uh, I reposted it on Instagram and Twitter and TikTok. He's I reposted it too. Up. Big Matt McChesney, 6 0 0 to 60 podcast. Had a great interview with Coach Deion Sanders, Coach Prime, yesterday, live and in person. Uh, he's coming on to let us know. I appreciate him reaching out to come on the show. Uh, he's going to come on for a few minutes before Steve Kim. 
Matt, welcome in. Appreciate you coming on and give us some updates. Uh, first of all, Matt, I want to address the, 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 the elephant in the room. Yeah. There are a bunch of fucking shit birds in the chat. No! Who started off coming out saying, Matt dropped the ball. And then we, you have some great advocates in the chat that were like, how did Matt drop the ball, you fucking bottom feeder? And I said, well, it's always the nobody that's done nothing for anyone. Let me repeat that. It's always the nobody who's done nothing for anyone. That is a bad fucking combination, by the way. It's always that guy that comes out with zero resume, who's never helped a fucking human in their life, and he's the guy that says he dropped the ball in the interview. Really? He was sitting there with the man interviewing him, you fucking nobody. So I'm trying to figure out how you dropped the ball. Um, apparently because you didn't go full JB on him and say, you're shitty, fucking asshole. I guess that's why you dropped the ball, uh, Matt. So well, that's Look, gentlemen, good morning. Um, happy <laughs> good <Thursday>. morning. <laughs> um, good morning to everybody out there. Yesterday was kick-ass, man. Just to have access to Coach Prime. To get sit down with him for an hour. I met with Coach Loadhold as well before the new offensive line coach. So we had a very productive meeting about recruits and the body bag and a bunch of other shit. But just to be able to sit down with him, man, for a good hour and yuck it up and talk shop. And he's my friend on top of being Coach Prime. You know, there's a lot of people that think we don't like each other. And I really could give a shit what people think. If, if it's dropping the ball, I don't know what that means. I wasn't going in there to, like, attack him. I, he's, I mean, I went. I was going in there to talk to him and like have some fun. And I think they think you're like Jim him. Rome. Yeah, like I, I didn't go in there to eviscerate him and like attack him. There's nothing to attack him about. He's doing it. First year was what it was. We're not going to sit here and, and beat a dead horse. We talked about a lot of different stuff. You know, there's we're putting up a bunch of clips today, but we talked about rivalries and like. We talked about the fight song, and he made some really good points on that. He got I got his Mount Rushmore of all time greats on like hip hop and singing. So you, you, I'm not going to give that away, but that was a pretty cool conversation. He's changing up the way the spring game weekend is, like really trying to empower his kids and not just his kids, but the guys on the team. Look, man, I, I've kind of changed my mind a little bit on the whole the way that he's doing business with all of the players. Like he's. He's a businessman. I've got this this picture in my office uh, of Jay Z, Sean Carter, and it says, "I'm not a businessman. I'm a business, business comma man. man." And that's that's the way I feel and operate. That's the way Coach Prime feels and operates. I know that's the way a lot of a lot of entrepreneurs do. He's an inspiration to me. I mean, I look up to the man, and you can learn a lot from those guys. And and. I've been hard and critical on him in the past. And that's why the fanboys don't like me. But you know who does like me? Coach Prime. <laughs> He's my guy. Like, right. you know, we, we talked about my son and like the whole, all the bullshit in Sports Illustrated and laughed about it. You know, talking about my boy, like I, I, it's my job to put my son on deck, just like it's his job to put his sons on deck. It's his job to put his players on deck and push them. It's my job to put my players on deck and push them. So, I, I mean, yesterday was just phenomenal. You can go on the podcast at Zero to 60 on YouTube. Please subscribe and like. I mean, Coach JB, bro, thanks for hooking me up with all the people who believe they've been incredible. Uh, without you, none of this happens, dog. So that's the thing. Coach JB is about putting people on. This is what the community and relationships are about. I did not go up there to ostracize or like eviscerate Deion Sanders, for God's sakes. I went up there to learn something. I went up there to have a conversation with my friend who I also admire, uh, the best corner that's ever played, to have some fun, some laughs, kind of lighten up the mood. And this is the other thing. A lot of y'all are just mad because you don't have access. And you, you can't get in front of the man. You don't have the ability to sit down. You don't have the mutual respect. The fact that I can criticize and be constructive and he, him and I are still very cordial and tight. And like, we talked football yesterday. We talked football off camera a lot. Like coach Lodeholt and I talked football off camera a lot. That is respect, son. And you can't buy that. You can't sell that. That can only be earned. So don't hate me because you ain't me, son. Pick your game up. Cause my shit is rolling. Hey, uh, 
People are contrary to belief. They, are, I'm a Dion hater. Apparently, the, I don't. I guess people don't realize that we talk all the time. They don't, he, listen. They don't listen, JB. They I don't think they realize that we talk too. And Dion tells me all the time, JB, keep being real, keep being you, love you, blah blah blah. I don't know if you want. I'm, I'm not going to show you messages, but Matt knows. I mean. I don't care. I'm going to keep it real, and I appreciate somebody understanding that you should be real. Like, I don't get it. I don't get well, why that's It makes, it makes me admire him even more because we talk about this a lot all the time. There's nothing worse than the sensitive superstar. Right. Like, dude, this comes with the territory. Right. You can't get you all the praise that. and like, not get any criticism. Exactly. Like, we, we, and, and he's teaching his sons how to deal with it and Travis Hunter how to deal with it, who's a freak. Like, <laughs> funny story, bro. We're walking in with my team to go up and interview coach. And Travis just, like, comes through and walks by. And he's like, oh, please excuse me. Thank you very much. Like, super cordial and humble. You never know this hood up. And my son's like, that's Travis Hunter. And I was like, yeah. And everyone's like, that was Travis Hunter? And I was like, yeah, bro. He's not, he's not like, walking on water and shit around here. He's just a dude that does stuff really well. Like, he's a bad man. And he's right. super humble and hungry. And, like, I think that the misconception is because they maximize the social media level so much. And there's a lot of haters. And, look, I, I'm with it. If you don't have haters, you ain't, you, you, you ain't doing shit. <laughs> you ain't You're not, you ain't doing shit. And haters are a good thing, dog. I love the haters. I, the haters. Somebody said that on Netflix, I heard. Yeah, man, I love y'all. I love the haters. You are my best friends. Haters yeah. is a sign that you are doing something. Like, if you don't have it, it's like, damn, I must not be doing enough. Like, exactly. Fuck. So you can't be a yes man, get along with everybody all the time. And look, I have a, there's a lot of people that I disagree with in the world that I have a lot of respect for because they stand by what they, what they think. And they, you know, they say what they, they preach and live a certain way. And they, they, they res and I respect that shit if you stand by you know, stand on it. If you stand on your word and you're a stand-up dude, stand-up chick, I'm going to take that seriously. So, look, man, Coach Prime is that dude. I love I love everything throughout the interview. You can go and watch it. It's only about 30, 35 minutes. It was fun. We had a good time. I mean, if you want me to, like, go up there all angry and shit, that's not, that's not me. Like, I, I know I get fired up on the show every now and then, but I'm not the angry dude that's like... And, <laughs> I, and I, I, think that's, I think that's why those few haters are... I, I think they got you like mis like misconceptualized because you and JB are you know are kind of like like the tough guys on the show as far as like going in. So they, I think they think that Matt walks around just like this all day, just. Like, like, I, like, Bailey Bailey has one clip that I wanted to play before we move on because I know I'm just dropping in today. I'll be back on tomorrow. That Matt's monster segment yesterday kicked ass, guys. That was awesome. Uh, but Bailey, play this clip real quick about Shador, and this is how we opened up the show yesterday. Remember, Zero to 60 Pod on YouTube. Like and subscribe. You can go on there and follow everything on Twitter as well, Zero to 60 Pod, and all the different platforms on social media. Up, mm -hmm. Smiles at him, spits blood, and you wipe it off with your sleeve. Right. And he goes out there and wins in double overtime. Yeah. And throws up the watch. As a father and a coach, was that the moment where you were I, – I know you already mm -hmm. knew, but was that another step in just the, no. the growth, the maturation part? We, we've – everything you're seeing, we've been there before. Right. Everything you're seeing with those two young men, uh, men, we've done it before. You're just getting a chance to see it in a Colorado uniform. But everything that we've seen, we know. Like it, it, I'm mic'd every game, so, you know, for the documentary and everything, so – you you could hit me. You could you could replay the documentary. When we got the ball back, I said he's gonna drive us down, we're gonna win. And I told Coach Kelly that that was sitting right beside me. Um uh we're gonna win. Baller. Hey, um, did you ask him about as fuck? Did you ask him about the Paris fucking walk? Nah, but we talked about like the spring game and how they're doing now they're doing a huge fashion show with all the student athletes. Now he's getting everybody involved. It, you know, like the more it goes on, the more his plan makes sense. Sometimes you just look, geniuses don't sit around and worry about what we think. They do, and then we react, and people probably and I'm a victim of it too. I criticize walking in Paris and shit, make business practice. You know the way we talk about it. But then when it goes full circle, he's setting that that's a setup. For the next thing he's doing, which incorporates everybody now at the University of Colorado and all the female athletes and a bunch of regular dudes. He's got a class, bro, a class at the University of Colorado you can take, Coach Prime's class. I can't remember the name, like 
the real name of it, but I saw a couple of videos. Yes, he had to sign an, an NDA to be in the class, and you're just in there kicking it with Coach Prime. I'll tell you, I ain't sleeping through that some bitch. I'm at that class. His right. book's about to come out, the, the 21 rules to, you know, dominate life or whatever it's called. And you know, I'm excited about that for him. He's just, he's always doing, man. And that's, as an entrepreneur and a guy who looked up to him anyway as the player he was with the pure swag, the more I learn about his businesses, the business and how he attacks the marketing and how he attacks social media, it inspires me to do the same. So look, man, out here in the world, and then we'll move on. I'm sure that we got other shit to talk about. If you don't get inspired by greatness, if you don't have this feeling, you don't wake up every morning and your palms itch and your fingers tingle and you're like, mm, I'm ready to go today. Today's a good one. I mean, I feel sorry for you, dog. I like your your hate and your vindicting <laughs> towards us and we and me. That shit don't mean nothing. It's just fuel for the fire because that motherfucker's burning. Hey, what do you what do you say about the fight song? <clears throat> so we actually yeah. asked him that at the <laughs> at the end of the interview. He goes, So do you have all your questions answered? You gotta press me. And I'm like, yeah. you know, I guess I asked everything. He's like, Do you really? Do you really have all your, your people want to know about the fight? Let's talk about fight songs. So he kind of brought it up. So I brought it up. And he was like, look, when we start winning, we'll start worrying about singing. And I was like, God damn it. That's the best point I've ever heard. And he's like, me throw a beat into it. And I was like, you get all eyes on me and the CU fight song meshed together. That shit might be dope. So we might need to throw a beat behind the CU fight song. I'll sing it. Somebody, somebody out there, give me a beat. Like the Snoop Dogg's on his Mount Rushmore. You got it. That was a pretty, I, I asked him about his Mount Rushmore of hip hop and uh, he went into it. And then it went from like hip hop to R&B to Luther Vandross at the end, dog. It was, it was pretty Hey, cool. so I, I got to ask you hard the questions. Really it's for the really show on planet Earth. What? Are you telling us right now that you're changing your tone on something you were very, very animate about? On the fight song, because I've talked no, to Darian Hagen, I've talked to other, like I talked to you know Chev and Darian and no. you. You all were on the same page about the fight song. Are you changing your narrative? No, no. Look, it's in, and we talked about this too. I think it's important to sing, but it's also more important to win. And trying to establish a new tradition is also important. Then he brought up the fact they brought up they brought in like eighty new dudes. They just didn't know, and it wasn't. They're not saying it wasn't priority, but it wasn't like they were more concerned with beating TCU than learning how to sing a fight song. I I don't have a problem with that after hearing about it. Um, but then, you know, the, I agree with him. Like, look, man, throw your own twist into this. But if if they win, you they, they'll sing the song. I'm sure they will moving forward because he knows it's important. Um, you know, we talked about the rivalry aspect and like so many of the guys that he played against in the NFL or in college and in high school are now his best friends and teammates in the NFL and how rivalries kind of grow from that. He brought up the CSU thing with Coach Norvell. That is not a friendly rivalry. They There's some tension there, dog, and I love it because there should be with that game. That game next year up in Fort Collins is going to be a madhouse. I guarantee you that uh, the game day and everybody and their mother is there for that one. That one's going to be a good one. Um, but, you know, he, he was like, <laughs> he had to learn about the Nebraska rivalry. He had to learn about – why you can't wear red at the facility. And he was like, and damn it, that's my favorite color. And I was like, yeah, man, but it's off. It's off limits. You can't do it. So, you know, he's, he's new to this as well, bro. And he's not, a, he's not afraid to say he is like coach prime coach. The best thing about coach prime, other than the way he makes you feel, because that's really his power. He makes everybody feel special, man. That he meets every single person. I, my whole team yesterday, he walked up to every one of them and shook their hands and introduced himself and looked them in the face. He ain't got to do that shit. He's Deion Sanders. But not only that, but his ability to kind of just understand what's needed in order to, like, maximize. I mean, it's so unique, bro. I'm just – I'm blown away. Mm. I, I know I sound like I'm impressed, and God damn it, I am, and – Watch the interview and tell me if you had that kind of access and you get to do a show and you get that guest, you wouldn't be hyped and impressed and excited about it. You 
Wow. Hey, Matt, I, I, I loved your picture. I loved your picture with him because, like, I've always I've noticed over like the year of me just knowing you. Anytime you take a picture with somebody who you respect or love or as a teammate or whoever, you got this like almost this kid like type of like energy that you can you can see. And I mean that in a respectful way. I was like in a in a happy just like, yeah. like look at your face right here, man. You just well, excited. One you know, of my favorite players of all time, and like I told them off off air, like, is it weird that so many big dudes idolize you too? I was like, I I could never pick the ball off and high step in, but I tried. <laughs> on the on the on the I was trying on the practice field and on the on the on the you know out there at recess, dog. I was trying to be prime time. I'm just, you know, it's 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 lunchtime with me. It ain't prime time. So <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, man. I mean, he's just he's just a genuine dude, bro, that really understands it. And if you're look, this is why football dudes are different. It's like military and everything else that's that's a frat or like a fraternity type atmosphere. It's, it takes something to get in. Yeah. I, it, there's so much mutual respect between ballers. And you can't, like I said earlier, you can't buy it. You can't replicate it. And there's a lot of people that want to be in that bubble that try so hard to get in it. And you can't unless you strapped. So unless you strapped up and like there's respect behind your name, which is, I value my name greatly. I value this shield greatly. It means something to me. The fact that, you know, Coach Lodeholt came up and was so, you know, he was awesome talking about the body bags and how much they use them and how big they are. He wants me to come up and do like a, a, tutor, a tutor session with the offensive line to show him exactly how to use it. And I'm like, fuck yeah, let's roll. When you hear that kind of shit, it, you know, your name carries weight. And my coach in college, the great Gary Barnett, used to always say, you play for the name on the front of this jersey, and you play for the name on the back of that jersey. It says Colorado and McChesney. And I take that, you know, I play for the name on the front of my shirt, and I walk around that Dungeon family on the back or McChesney on the back, whatever it is. I never forget what's on my back that people are watching. So keep watching because we we just getting started. This is just the fucking beginning. The takeover continues. We got Max Crosby coming up. We got Mike Pinnell coming up. Man, we got some dudes, son. We have Derek Wolf is going to be coming on the show shortly. Uh, let's see. Matt Rule from Nebraska's head coach. We got Kelly Denningham from Arizona State's going to come on. Ryan Walters, head coach of Purdue. Shit. 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 Matt, appreciate you jumping on uh, last minute uh, during the show. Glad we had it open. We just had Frank Martin on, legendary basketball coach. Uh, yeah. UMass right now. He's, awesome. uh, He's an ass kicker, too. Oh, uh, that's why we He's get along. Um bro yeah that's why we get along we only bring ass kickers on this show man if you haven't noticed facts we do uh facts smitty will say facts uh um, hey, what are we talking about tomorrow we're gonna talk about how Jaden daniels might be better than all these quarterbacks it's gonna be yeah. a surprise yeah man. we can and then how 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 horrible this quarterback draft class is yeah oh, we can so you, just, you think it's watered down yeah. Horrible. Oh, I can't wait to talk about this tomorrow. Look at that, bitch. That's what we call drip, drip, drop, and eargasm tease. Cliffhanger. Woo! Cliffhanger. Woo! Peace. Oh. See you tomorrow. Good. Shout out to Matt jumping on. Um, Wildman yeah. Steve's in the chat just talking shit the whole time about a person who interviewed a guy that's top five probably all-time legends uh, at the position. Listen, would I ask harder questions? Sure. But – who cares? Matt's it don't matter though. Like, listen, there's different, there's different forms and style of interview. Because I, 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 my style of interview is different than somebody else's style. Like, I just think, listen, we have a certain fan base on this show, which is great. Where it's, JB's the hard nose, the muff, and that's that's your brand. So if JB's going to interview somebody, that's that's his brand. But at the same time, Matt is he, he he's an alum of Colorado. He goes to the school. He supports. Why would he go there? And diss the head coach or put him in a bad situation. You see, this, 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 this guy, this fucking wild man, bitch in here. He don't understand that when you have guests on, you let them talk. When you interview guests, you let them talk. You're not there to be a fucking fanboy, controversial Twitter fucking guy like Wild Man is. Wild Man, you're the epitome of a bitch, and that is why you're in our tweets, and this is why you're in our chat. I'm not going to interrupt Matt's interview to call you out during the show, you fucking troll. Now go away. You're a bitch. Bye.
All right, now we have Steve Kim on the Korean Cosell Crouching Tiger Hidden Gems with Steve Kim. Uh, clap it up for Big Steve. Big Steve, little Steve, oh, Steve in the dark. What's up, Steve? How you doing? Hey, Steve. Uh, we got to come right out the gate. We didn't get to it yesterday, and Smitty, to my. I think I'm the one that's caused this for Smitty. Smitty's young. He never got to see anyone past, you know, 2005 play. So I got to add our before 2005 play any sports. So it's my fault to give him these greats to break down. But he is getting eviscerated on social media by putting Bill Russell on his bottom of the barrel overrated list two days in a row. Not only in for he put all time athletes overrated Bill Russell, and then he put all time basketball players Bill Russell. He's getting killed, Steve. So I had to apologize to him, Steve. I hate the segment. It's so first of all, it's so it's so hard to pick overrated. It's so hard to pick the all time overrated. But if you put me in a position, I gotta speak on what I know and what I see. And I think Bill Russell was overrated, meaning not saying he's not great. But a lot of times, guys have him like top five because of how many rings he has. But when I watch the little bit of film and tape that we have, I don't see him being actually better than a lot of other players that came after him. And we're hey. leaning on the fact that he won hey, 11 see, rings during an era where it was five teams total or something in the NBA. Hey, Steve, we just had Frank Martin on, and Frank Martin reeled Smitty in. He was like, who's your number one quarterback ever? Uh, Tom Brady. Why? Because he won. <laughs> He's like, well, Bill Russell has a leg. He didn't wheel me in. I I, I saw it coming, and I, and I and I clapped back at him as well. I I, I damn near won that debate, Steve, as well, honestly. Where are you at, Steve, with Bill Russell? I mean, this is a difficult one. This is why I, when you do these all time lists, I try to go generation to generation. I mean, Bill played in the era where the NBA basically began. I think he was probably the second great NBA big man after George Mike. And look, the the technique, the fundamentals, the teaching of the sport was really different. If he played in today's game at about 6'7 to 6'8, that's probably how tall he was, he would still be an effective player, but more along the lines of Ben Wallace. He'd be a really good rim protector. He'd do a lot of great things to help you win the game. Offensively, he was a little bit raw. But look, the guy facilitated a lot of winning, though, going all the way back to college, uh, dominating the NBA. I think they won at least 10, if not 11, championships under his direction. Uh, it's a tough one because, like, even when you look at boxing, how do you really compare a Stanley Ketchell to a Ray Robinson to a Marvin Hagler to then a Bernard Hopkins and a then now, now Gennady Golovkin to Saul Canelo Alvarez and so on? It's difficult because, look, if you look at the technique of any sport, I mean, Ty Cobb used to hold the bat with his hands apart on the bat like right. this. Even yeah, think about like, NFL, uh, Steve, and, like, the old school quarterbacks, like the the – their drop backs. The, yeah. I've seen film where guys will hike the ball and literally throw it like this. Over yeah, the well, and those, those guys aren't exactly like rated number one. I mean, it kind of starts with Johnny Unitas. But, I mean, I always yeah, – Even I, him, I mean. <laughs> I ask this question, though, because every time there's a like a, a, a hypothetical of a boxer from this age to like 50, 60, 70 years ago, and they always use today's rules. And I said, oh, okay. How about this, though? What if the guys had to weigh in eight hours before the fight um, what if they had to actually fight in a real weight class where they couldn't blow up 25, 30 pounds? What if they had to fight 15 rounds? What if they had to use horsehair gloves? And then what if they actually had to fight every month? Right. And without the pharmaceuticals. See, I, I look at it differently. I don't ever think, well, could the old guys have fought today's era? Yeah. Fighting once every four or five months, they'd probably commit suicide because they'd be bored. But mm. I don't I don't know if today's fighters could fight 60 years ago where they're telling you, hey, two weeks you're fighting this guy. Uh, well, what's he look like? You'll find out in the first round. Just box and figure it out. So, and, But in basketball, it's a little bit different. The game right. was not played above the rim during uh, Russell's era, so I think it's easier for him to be um, a little bit more defensively dominant. It, he didn't have much of a post game, to be honest with you. I, most of his offense today would probably come on putbacks and transition stuff. But the guy won. The guy facilitated winning. And he's a, he's a legend. He's a legend because of that. Game to yeah. win. That in itself is a skill. By the way, he was 6'10. Uh, I don't know if somebody said. Was he really 6'10? Yeah. I've heard, I've, he, I've heard he was closer to 6'8. 
I that's seen him at the big three. He's a tall cat. He's not a six seven. I know that. He's much taller than six seven, but I don't know if he's six ten. But I, he looks it to me. I would say he I, he could pass for it definitely. I don't know. And but, all I'm saying, he played in the air and and, and, and and listen, he scored like I can't remember his exact average off the top of my head, but he averaged like sixteen points or something in the air. That like, I mean, come on, you know what I'm saying? Like a guy, a guy like a Hakeem or Shaq. And I'm just, again, I gotta. I gotta but I got to question your 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 rationale though, because you got CP two in your like top five point guards of all time, and I'm like, I don't get it. I don't get your spectrum's too far apart. A winner that a one eleven is horrible, but a guy that's never won shit is good. Uh-oh. I don't think. Uh-huh. First of all, I never said Bill Russell was horrible. I say he's overrated. Overrated means you're rated too high. Like that's literally uh-huh. what that uh-huh. means. Uh-huh. Well, and, and Bill Russell's always ranked in the top five, top six all time players ever. I think that's too high, and we're saying that just because he won. We don't put Robert Ory top five because he has seven damn rings, so it has to be more than rings. Bill Russell was amazing for his era. But, but we, Bill we, Russell the, was. My, do, your, do your eye – my eyes work. So when I look at the damn tape and I look at I look at, I look at it, he was nowhere near as dominant or skilled as a long list of other players, even big men, not even going to the – Majority but you don't know the ca- and that he just, was a catalyst. We're scared to say that because of who he is, and I get it. I respect him yeah. so much. Well, the thing about Bill Russell, though, the offense still went around him, and they back in the day, you shot, they shot, they went around him. He wasn't the guy that Shaq they were dumping the ball to all day. That game was totally different then. Uh, Steve, let me ask you right out the gate. Justin Fields is on our thumbnail because rumors are he's out. He's either a Falcon or a Raider now. Um, where are you at with the whole process of how this has become in the NFL? My question to you is, and I know you're going to have some hidden gems for us on this one. Like, what are the Bears' plan if you do get rid of them? What is your plan going to be? Because you're starting over with a rookie. You have zero wideouts again, zero O-line, horrible defense, and no run game. Why is that better than just keeping Justin Fields? Yeah, I mean, look, I said it a couple months ago. If, if I'm the Bears, which I'm not, I would have found a way to do two things. First of all, I think I would have stuck with Fields for another year. And whatever I do with my two top 10 draft choices, one of them had to be Marvin Harrison. So no matter what I did, whether trade in or trade up, trade down, I make sure that he does not get away from me. So I don't know if you wanted to draft him number one or so if you parlay that down. The other thing is, and I've said this, I think Jaden Daniels is the most interesting quarterback prospect. I think he has great athleticism, ball placement. Um, he got a huge year at LSU playing with a great wide receiving crew, probably better than anything he's going to go into going into his rookie season. I don't know. Are they really going to roll the dice on Caleb Williams? If I'm the Bears and you said, Steve, you have two choices. You have to take a guy that, that may be a little shaky, a little bit of a malcontent in terms of coming to Chicago or your organization, or you take that pick and you parlay it and you make sure you still have at least two picks in the top 10. I would be inclined to do the latter. I'm not sold on Caleb Williams. Mm. Not either. And Dan Orlovsky came out today. I don't know if you guys, Smitty or Steve saw it. I'll get up this morning. He was on vacation. He came back today and I, my TV stays on overnight, so it came on every morning. I wake up to it. Uh, he said that he takes Jaden now. Clear mm. head and shoulders. Jaden's his number one now after watching film on vacation. So, mm. ah, Matt likes Jaden. Uh, I think Smitty likes Jaden. I don't know if Smitty thinks he's number one or not, but I, I'm not high on the quarterback class. I'm not high on the draft class. I, I really not. People think that this is a new class. I'm, I'm with Kurt Warner. I've been saying what Kurt Warner's saying for the last three or four years, as you guys all know. Um, I'm not high on the college coaching, the the college offense. I, I, I think we're throwing the ball lateral behind the line of scrimmage more than we ever have in our entire lives as quarterbacks. And I think it's a horrible transition to the NFL. I think it's fundamentals aren't coached anymore. We just had Frank Martin on who's talking about the same thing in basketball. Uh, you, It's a mercenary business. You got new kids every semester. How do you really teach anymore? You don't. You just coach real fast, and then hopefully they stay and they don't go to a new school. You're not teaching them nothing. I don't think this quarterback class is any good at all, and I wouldn't be shocked if Sam Hartman's not the best out of all of it in five years. <laughs> hmm. 
Because well, you know, as I know, he'll stay in there. He'll throw the ball. He'll take a shot. He'll get, he ain't gonna run around after, out there after he hits his fifth step. He's gonna make sure the receiver gets the ball. Now, is he good enough? Who knows? But at least he'll do yeah, it. Yeah, but I've seen a lot of Jaden Daniels. He threw the ball downfield. Him and Malik Neighbors. They weren't just bubble screening their way down the field. They weren't. They they were hitting shots downfield. They were taking vertical hits. Uh, Jaden Daniels' ball placement, I think, was superb. Um, Coach Zach Smith actually said it after watching tape, and he could put the ball into a teacup, and he's got enough athleticism uh, where he, he can extend drives. Now, look, at the next level, he's going to have to learn how to hook slide and get out of bounds a little quicker. There's no doubt that's going to have to be an adjustment in his game. But with Jaden, there's no issues. I am not drafting with what that is at stake. My number one pick, I don't need to have a guy that's already saying when four and a half, five years, I could leave here. Or, well, you know, I kind of, I don't know if I really want, you know what, just go. Just go then. Go somewhere else. That's real. I agree. All right. Were you on Whitlock yesterday about the KG and the LeBron thing? Oh, we talked about a whole 45 minutes of it. We're trying to get Victor Conte on today. Oh, okay. I know Steve's close with him, works with him. What, what's your take on this whole thing? I, I've never seen a guy at 40. I, Monday, Smitty and I had this debate. I didn't come out and say it because I, we were talking about Kobe and LeBron and how, how everyone just surpassed Kobe. And, we, and I'm like, I've heard other things about it. But I've never seen a guy at 39 pushing 40 actually look and get better in my life. Um, kudos to him. I, I, but I'm kind of tired of the million dollars of a year body thing and sitting in wine all day. I've done that, and I'm, I didn't turn into – I didn't get six-pack from it. But he is a genetically gifted freak. We you're get also it. not working out every, every single day, yeah, JB. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not I'm at the same age, though. I'm talking about at 38. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm trying to – I'm 10 years older now. I'm trying to figure out – Do you? if I just straight up ask you, you think he is on, on at least – HGH or some HGH, type of rub? EPO. Yeah, I think it's been the worst kept secret. You talk to people in Miami, uh, people very close to him were associated or implicated in the biogenesis thing. We have to be fair about though. He's not the only one. I mean, this thing is pretty widespread. And in, in, in world-class sports, I would say at least half are on something. And so people have to understand, look, is it a level playing field if everyone does it? I would say, yeah. I mean, I, I used this quote yesterday. This is from Ben Johnson's track coach who engineered his 1988 gold medal, which he had for about 20 minutes. You know, it's a level playing field, just not the one you think it's on. That's from a quote from Charlie Francis. And he's also said, you show me a clean athlete, I'll show you a loser. So there is a, uh, uh, there's a reality to this. But to think that, LeBron is not enhanced in any way, or to at least have a suspicion, uh, you're, you're being incredibly naive. And, and here's the last thing. I don't think LeBron will ever try to really fight these allegations for one reason. Because let's say he sues or for defamation or slander or whatever. Okay, good. The last thing a guy like he wants is the process of discovery in a legal motion. It's the last thing he wants. Smitty, I know you have something. I, I had something too. Go ahead. Yeah, I mean, I don't like when I when I saw that clip from KG. I, my first emotion w- reaction was just like he's just kind of like in, in, he's just saying it like in a loose like manner. I didn't take it so serious as everyone else did, and maybe that's 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 just me like just not viewing it the same way you guys did. Um, I, I th- let me get a clip right here. I know. Yeah, he can get a bucket on no Brown right nope. now. Nope. Yeah, he can get a bucket. No way. Nope. Now he can get a bucket on that average right now. 25. No, I didn't say he ain't. I don't care what he's doing, but he no. ain't sliding playing at that Shit. All defensive level. 25. Like, nah, nah. Lord, 25. You still, Lord, he dunking? He's still dunking the ball with. I'm saying that Bronny can get a bucket on Bron. I'm saying he can't. One rollout, get a bucket. Three dribbles? No way. You, I'm yeah, talking he about. He can get a bucket on No, him. no, 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 no. Man, he, man, come on. That little dude explosive, bro. He is, he but you Bron. seen his dad? His dad on that balcony, yeah, he he on that new he juice. He's sliding like he used to. Man, bro. Like, K, I don't know. If you, we all know KG the way he talks. So, like KG is always just, that's how he talks. Like, you know, like he just, he's, he talks loose. He talks like he just, I don't know. I didn't take that seriously, but maybe it was something like a subconscious thing that really came out. Well, maybe exactly. it's true. Look, I, I don't know. Jokes are like stereotypes, They're, a lot of them are rooted in truth. 
I hear you. Let me ask you this, though, Smitty. Let me ask you this, Steve. Is this going to be a bigger thing? Is this going to be the Barry Bonds? No, not unless the government gets involved. Barry was not a beloved figure. Uh, did not have a great relationship with the media. He did not play the access game, did not want the access. The NBA media is generally very soft, and, uh, you know, they need the ax- They need to be able to ask, oh, my God, LeBron, how do you do it after three days off playing? You're so great. They do that. So there's going to be no real scrutiny. And also, he's part of the protected class of uh, – athletes with certain political and social views so he'll be left alone no, don't don't NBA players get like uh, do they get tested though for steroids no. Or, like, or no they don't no so there has to be some sort of test they have a drug testing policy in the they NBA. have a drug testing policy but i got to talk to an, a former nba guy last night because of this topic we had and i was told that and this is clearly exactly what he told me but i won't tell him who said it of course uh but he said that adam silver does not test for HGH or any of those supplements, and he will not. And he knows what's happening, and he wants those guys to look good for the TV and for the game. And he goes, it's actually a joke at some point because KG subtly said that, Smitty, to your point, because he believed, the guy I talked to last night believes, that KG doesn't want guys to call this guy the so-called quote-unquote GOAT if he is using certain things for longevity purposes. So if you do play longer, Smitty, you're going to score more. You're going to have more stats. It is a true fact, though. Well, the other thing though, is, like, there's other, this recent clip, too, KG is actually saying LeBron is like the, the GOAT, though. Like, everyone's, got, everyone's, I think, is getting misconstrued and thinking that KG isn't a fan of LeBron. I, I've seen a clip. I think I have to go find out. I'm pretty sure he was on the Stephen A show or something that. a couple months ago, and he was actually like, Saying that you, you look, you look at the numbers. You, you look at all this, the longevity. You got to put LeBron. You got to put LeBron right there in that conversation. I, I'll find a clip maybe for like tomorrow's show. But I, I don't well, know. a couple of things: the NBA cannot afford to have LeBron be suspended. And that, that's the reality. Right, he'll just retire. <laughs> in terms of the testing, keep this in mind: a lot of these substances, and this is how Balco really rose to prominence. The designer steroids, like the cream and the clear, they're undetectable. That was the difference. You know, Victor Conte has basically said, when you fail a drug test and you know that you're going to be drug tested, you are failing an IQ test. And uh, many of these athletes that have been associated with steroids or whatever, like a Barry Bonds, for instance, they never failed a drug test, guys. Keep that in mind. Yeah. They never actually popped dirty. I get it. Uh, All right. Before you get out of here, I got to ask you the last couple minutes here. Um, I need to get a couple of gems out of this one. College football committee has just recently talked 14 team playoff. We haven't even had a fucking 12 team playoff play through yet, Steve. And we're already talking about 14 teams. I just asked Frank Martin about it. I go, is athletics just watered down now? And he basically said, yes, in a nutshell, that the top teams are top guys and top teams are leaving. The bottom guys are getting better because they're getting those top guys. And now they're meeting in the middle, which equals a watered down system. Where are you at? Why are we already discussing 14 teams in college football when we haven't even played the 12-team playoff yet? Well, as Gordon Gecko once said so succinctly, gentlemen, greed is good. And, look, this is always about money. It's always about extra television programming. And my biggest fear is, is now you are making the conference championship games almost irrelevant. If you know that certain conferences are going to send at least two, three teams, there's going to be, and this was brought up to me on a radio show that I'm on on a weekly broadcast in Las Vegas. They said, Steve, are we going to start seeing teams just say, hey, we're already a one or no loss team. Why don't we rest our best five players? I've been saying this. And I'm like, "Uh oh, you're you're in trouble now. If you're making theoretical playoff games or play in games or conference title games almost irrelevant, you are losing the plot. You've opened up Pandora's box, Mitty. You've opened up a can of worms that I've told, been saying this. Nobody wants to listen, though. Why would Florida State undefeated not lose on purpose week 12 so they don't get to, they don't have to play a certain team? 
Like it's gonna be strategic. For me, it's like a it, it, it's a seeding standpoint, though. For me, like the way I would view it, like it's like, all right, well, if I win this game, maybe I, I get a buy or I become the number one seed or whatever the case may be. Well, that game now matters, so they have to figure out a way to make that game still matter. Is what I'm They're saying. not going to make it matter because you got independents like Notre Dame. If they went undefeated and were the number one team in America, they're going to get the fifth seed automatically because they're not in a Power Five conference. Yeah. Which, by it's the way, I, okay, I like that part, though. Get the, get them SOBs into a conference. They, they I punch- know. I just don't. <laughs> it's just not thought of against. They didn't think it out against, Steve. Another NCAA. No, they didn't. Marvel. But look, they should have allowed. Personally, I think the most natural thing to do was just go to eight. Do it for five, six years and say, okay, does this work? Because what what you're marrying this whole concept is with these new super conferences. Because in three years, there may not even be an ACC within three to five years. Okay? Uh, Florida State's doing their best to escape. And if they do that, I think the floodgates are open. We don't know what's going to really happen to the Pac-2, if there's even going to be such a thing. Um you know, big 12 and you got obviously SEC and the big 10 are playing at a different plane, but I would have just said eight, eight teams to me still to me, again, it's not perfect, but you still got the sense, right? These are the elite teams with a couple of other good fillers. When you start getting to 12 and 14, you are now diluting the process. No doubt about that. Yeah. And this is another reason why, in my opinion, the NCAA goes away here in the next few years, because, the SEC, the Big 12, somebody's going to combine. They're going to end up walking away from the NCAA, who really does nothing anymore. They don't pay players. They the Collectives play players. They don't have anything to do with the playoff committees who run this whole thing. And I, I don't see what the NCAA is really there for. They're the judge, jury, and executioner. They give no value to these teams that are playing and making all this money for an entity that gives nothing back. It, may, it makes no sense to me. What about us? What about this scenario? If you're one of these teams in the uh, Big Ten or SEC, you play a team in Week Three, two quality teams in the top fifteen, and then they keep winning no matter what the result is of the first game. Then they meet in the conference title game, and they're both in the top six. They're each one loss teams or no loss teams and a one loss team. All right, then whatever happens is there's a chance they could play in the semifinal. You're ta- telling me a college program might face another one three times. Hello, we've just turned this into the National Football League. I, 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 I'm, I'm cool with that. I'm not, <laughs> I like I like the National Football League. I, yeah, but here's the thing: that's because it's National Football League. I used to love the fact in college you had one chance to beat your rival. And you had to live with that 365 days. There was a value to the game. What creates value? Scarcity. Smitty's not going to be happy with it when the first game, everyone played. The second game, six of them set out. The third game, 20 set out. You're not going to be happy, bro. Well, if they play three you. times, that's the national playoff. I don't think anyone's sitting out there. I still do. I, I still think so. I think if the 14 seed Tulsa has a is in the playoff, and they have a guy that's a, a first rounder. He ain't playing in a in a number against the number four. That'd be a, you know what I would do. And again, I the uh, the, uh, the rooftop Koreans, the owner Steve Kim would say that guy that set out a playoff game out. We're not drafting him. Yeah, he's soft as hell. I don't see a player sitting out in the playoffs. Yeah, I don't game. either though. To be if honest, you're in the playoffs. I don't know. Right you now, got a chance. You, I don't care what you, you are. You got a chance. Ain't no Let's way in hell you gonna set out of a playoff game. That, Let's bet. I'll no bet you right now on air. Bet you live right now. You're making a bet because I I can't control. I can't control these with these knuckleheads. Well, I'm just saying it's. I'm you said it won't happen. I'm saying it's gonna happen. That's all I'm saying. It's gonna happen. They're gonna set out. These cats are way too soft. This is what's coming of a playoff game. I uh, I look bowl games I get playoffs oh boy if they do that that play this is it does happen it's gonna be a rarity it's gonna be like one guy here and there it's not gonna be like how the bowl games are like, it's not gonna be yeah, like, it is. Uh, yeah, like, it like is. Georgia had the whole fucking their whole starting lineup just set, like or not I, Georgia I you. Uh, that's what they had their thing. whole entire starting no. lineup just sitting out that's, that's what it's gonna be when you, went to, when you went to 12 this is it's gonna be exactly what a shitty bowl game is gonna be because they know they have no shot at beating Georgia even though you put in Liberty at the 12th seed, they know they have no shot. I'm telling you, less is more. We're making this shit so no, diluted, coach, dude. I don't disagree with you, but I remember when baseball expanded its playoffs and they realigned everybody. 
Uh, Bud Selig did that in mid nineties. Everyone hated it. You know what though? It's actually created more interest for more teams throughout the year. It has not been devastating for baseball. And I don't think it's going to be that bad with the college football. I agree with Steve Kim. Eight was probably like the sweet spot, like the perfect yeah. number. 12 might be a tad bit too high. But we typically have like about eight teams where we're like, damn. Like like even well, this past year, we were arguing like, should, should Bama get in? Should Texas get in? Will Texas beat Bama? I don't know. Well, Jordan's still the best team. They shouldn't be out. Like we always have those conversations. So now yeah, been that way, though. This, this solves that problem. And, yeah, does it sprinkle in a couple little straggler teams at the end that maybe don't deserve to be in? Okay, cool. Maybe two teams just shouldn't even be in the conversation they got in. Okay, I'm sorry. But other than that, it's going to be a – it's going to be a – like, we're not going to be like uh, 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 Western Michigan and fucking uh, Western Kentucky. Like, no, it's going to be some legit fucking programs in that playoff every single year. I don't think from five on are legit programs. <laughs> I think he's well, I don't know. Nah, about come that. on, man. Four teams. Man, stop, JB. Bro, Ohio you State, gotta have Michigan, Bama, Georgia. Like, the, the, a lot. Yeah. It, come on, JB. You got to – eight to me works with every major conference. That that champion gets a bid, and then you have a couple of at-large. Um, Again, there has to be a value because scarcity matters. Like, I didn't like it when – I thought NCAA basketball was fine in 64. It was perfect in a lot of ways. But when they started adding play-in games, I'm like, okay, hey, guys, go to the NIT. Get to, you've had 25, 30 games to prove. Go to the NIT. And now they they watered that thing down. Well, the game's watered down. I don't even watch the March Madness anymore. I won't watch a minute. I mean, I, I like FCS. FCS playoffs are great every year. But we never even talk about it. Division two playoffs are great every year. If you watch anything, if you care anything about Division one AA or FCS now and Division two, at least the format, in my opinion, is 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 quality. That's what I thought NCAA should have did with the college football years ago, but they don't. Steve, always a pleasure. Um, we're gonna have to do some UFL Palooza. We get to watch the fucking worst <laughs> football players in the world play in the spring. Hey, it's uh, jobs. It's creating don't opportunities. Don't do that, baby, because you got a few players probably playing in it, and yeah, I probably got a few we're teammates creating playing opportunities in opportunities for enterprising young men that just yeah. want to. By the way, they're still the worst professional players in the world. (laughs) They're still the worst professional. My players are not. (laughs) But they're still professional players, though, right? They're still getting paid to play, right? I'm asking you a question. These are guys who who in the NFL made for a hot second and came back down or CFL. Hey, Steve Kim and I will start a basketball league tomorrow and call it a professional league. Always find the negative in every fucking thing possible. Whatever it is. Watch how shitty the quarterback play is. I think I might do a whole video, Steve. Coach, you're right about that. There's only 10 play, yeah. good yeah. quarterbacks in the world. That's why they're always overdrafted. That's why you always stock up on arms. But a lot of these guys are trying to live the dream. And, and every roster has a guy or two that's going to play a year or two. I remember Tommy Maddox. Yeah. Did not have a great pro career. It didn't end well with the Broncos. And he played for the L.A. Extreme of the XFL. And you know what? He crafted a career with the Steelers. Hey, he hate me. Also known as Rod Smart, he made a Super Bowl. Hell yeah! So you gotta play the game if you want to live the dream. I give these guys credit, and I don't watch a lot of it, but I I actually appreciate the fact that there is a quote unquote developmental or farm system to give these guys a shot to at least hey, this guy might be worth bringing into camp. Then you got to make that thing happen in August if man, you hit the NFL. Shout out to UFL, man. I play with a lot. Shout out I to t- Smitty's being optimistic. I play. No, I'm just being real. I play college ball. There's, there's so much fucking talent in, in, in the college football level that gets dismissed at the NFL level. There's so many politics. I know guys that definitely could play in the NFL who just didn't get the opportunity. Like, trust me. Like, don't. Uh, it, it's not just NFL or bust. There's talent in the CFL everywhere. Right. Baby. What, what is wrong with wanting to play? The game trying to get a gig and extend the dream. Jimmy, you, like, you, you, you fucking pop. You played in like the yeah. arena and did shit like how right. you gonna diss these cats? Were you shitty? Were you a shitty yeah, quarterback? Yes or no? Enough. Yes or no? Were you shitty? I wasn't good enough. Were you shitty? I wasn't good enough. No, I said, were you shitty? I don't know. I wasn't no, good no, enough. Yeah, all right then. Yeah. Well, Smitty. these players aren't good enough. Smitty. Oh, say that then. Don't say they shitty. Oh, hey, no, by the I'm way, shitty. Smitty, Steve. before I get out of here, I sent you some stuff on the Twitter DM. Let's see what the press conference for Ryan Garcia, Devin Haney looks oh, like man. today. Uh, Ryan was going all Cheech and Chong last night. Oh, um, 
Devin's threatening not to go because this guy, he thinks he's going to pull out or not take. And I kind of agree with them. Ryan Garcia is always trying to put on an act and trying to impress people. Um, you know, I don't know. I've never really been that high on Ryan Garcia. Look, I don't want to say he's a YouTube fighter. He's not. That's hyperbole. But I've told people that he always has the wrong priorities. Yeah. You know, and now, you know, just a couple of weeks or months after divorcing his wife, now he's hooking up with an OnlyFans model. I hope that works out. She seems like a nice, wholesome girl. I'm not making a judgment. Um, but that's, that's all I can really tell you. It's just, it's going to be interesting if how that press conference goes. I'm not going, I have lunch plans. Okay, I'll just okay. watch on, but check, check your clips, Darnell. Yeah, I'm going to check it out. Haney did say his breath smelled like uh, liquor too when they were face to face. I don't know if it was just, just saying yeah, it or what. Funny? But- Smitty, I said three years ago to Mario on the show, I said, out of Haney, Tank, Tio, um, and Ryan, I said, the most stable guy, the most disciplined guy overall that has the least amount of issues is Haney. Mm. Honestly. He, and it shows up in his performances because he is very consistent technically and fundamentally. He's here all the time. There's an old saying that coaches say, be the same guy every day. Yeah. That's what Devin Haney does. You may not like his style. He's not always exciting, but every fight he's up here. I'm just telling you, he's pretty good. Although I don't think he beat Loma, but still at 140 with those extra five pounds, he looked like a different guy back in December. So look out for that press conference. Let's see if uh, I, I, I think it's made. all because of he's from Victorville, but we'll talk about that later. <laughs> You're hey, not I, the only one who says that. All right, guys. I appreciate you hook up this weekend or something. All right, brother. Appreciate it. Later. Next up, we got Achilles, 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 Achilles. Achilles. Man, you thought he was a brother, though. Achilles in there. I'm a young what buddy. Up, what up? What up? What's going on, my guy? Hey, by the way, I think, I think, uh, I think Haney's gonna get his ass beat. So I'm say it again. Haney's gonna get his ass beat, bro. Hold on, time out. Why is that? Like, what have you seen from Ron? Nah, I see Steven what you're trying to do there. I see what you're trying to do there. No, I'm just, I'm just fuck with y'all. I'm just fuck with y'all. But anyway, let's get into some golf. I, hey. I didn't heard enough of boxing. Hey, uh, Tiger won't respond to Rom's text. Is he, he just being a bitch made cat? What's up with he that? He ain't responding to Rory either. So, you know, uh, I got a text like I, uh, I mentioned on the Twitter Spaces the other day, uh, quote unquote, from somebody who used to be a part of the Excel management with, uh, you know, Stein, is it Steinberg, Steinbrenner, whatever the fuck his name is. Uh, Stani Lee, um, Lee Steinberg, yeah, yeah he's, and, he's uh, now. and somebody used to be with their agency text me and he said, Rory and uh, Tiger, they're at war, you know, quote unquote, they're at war. So I don't know if you saw that little clip I posted yesterday of Rory's press conference, but his tone is, has changed. I mean, like tremendously. I mean, if you would have told me a year ago that Rory would be even considering coming to live, I mean, I would have probably built my house on it. Right. But um yeah it's 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 wild you know his old agent chubby chandler saying he's going after the masters uh there's a lot of stuff you know going on and i think what it is 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 rory he's he's tired of he's kind of fed up you know he's he feels betrayed in a sense he's been used by not only the tour not only monahan but you know tiger not only somebody he's looked up to for all of his life but people like you know me at a young age and then you know people growing up in the game of golf you know the, the greatest of all time and he feels you know some sort of betrayal because if you notice Tiger's not the one saying any of this stuff it's been Rory saying it for the past year but how much of that stuff did Rory actually want to say and how much of that stuff was he you know he forced in of saying by Tiger and all the high up sponsors so it's 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 going to be interesting you know these next three months you know especially after the Masters I think I told somebody yesterday if Rory does win the Masters um I don't see him going anywhere I think you know that will kind of solidify the legacy deal or whatever the fuck they talk about you know but he'll have uh I think it would be the grand slam if he wins the the green jacket so uh as far as being like Tiger and you know being kind of close to him I think that would still the deal for Rory but if he doesn't I think he he definitely comes to live hey we call this tee it up Thursday now since we got you on Thursdays uh we uh I'm trying you know i Obviously, I've heard some few po- few people talk recently in the last couple of weeks um, about this. I've heard two crazy names coming to live. I'm not going to say their names, but I was told not to say it. But two crazy names. You mentioned some crazy names as well. Yeah. I, if those cats come, like right now, if I asked you right now on paper, 
Has the live surpassed the PGA talent wise? Top I mean, to yeah, bottom. I mean the OWGR obviously doesn't say you know different, but it should, and we know how corrupt that is. But you know, even if you just look at, I mean, just just look. It doesn't take anything but common sense. It really doesn't. It really doesn't. You go look at the fields, and you know, look at the Mexico Open last week. You know, it was a great story. Jake Knapp, you know, he's 29 years old. He just now became a rookie. He he won a start. You know, yada yada yada. Congrats. But at the end of the day, I don't know who the fuck the top five people were in the tournament. I, don't, I, I genuinely don't. I didn't never, even know. I've never heard of them. I've never heard of them. You, if you go and look at a live tournament and you look at the top five leaderboard every single week, I mean, since the damn thing started, when they were just you know barely had you know three or four of the top guys when they were at Centurion the first year, you still knew who at least two of the top five guys were. And it's just the PGA. I really don't know. It still shocks me that Monahan's there. I mean, it really does. I know I kind of beat a dead, dead horse talking about it, but it does. The guy is single-handedly destroying it bit by bit, monthly, daily, weekly. It's like, what? Either he's got some major dirt on Tiger or whoever is running the tour or, you know, something's going on. I have no idea. All the live needs, and I know Pat says this, everyone, we always have this conversation at the house. They need a TV contract. That's all the live needs. Live needs yeah. to get on. And I'm surprised. Like, I think if TNT would have jumped on it and got it, that Barkley would be announcing live golf games, right? Our matches right now. He wouldn't be doing just basketball because lit because TNT would have took it on. That's all they need is a TNT thing. He would have turned, he wouldn't have did it. He wouldn't even ask for that much money that he did. But for him to leave TNT, he had to ask for that money, which is makes sense. Pat had some little insight on that as well. He's Barkley's boy. I see that's what I think the live needs a TV contract yeah. from somebody other than CW finding an app. They need yeah, it. It's, it's too hard to find it, I feel like now. Yeah. yeah. It's not. It's just, I think it's more of like, like I'll even be honest, myself, my generation. It's like, it's really not that hard. Your ass has to get on the phone, download an app, make an account, mirror, you know, mirror play it to your TV. It ain't that fucking hard, but I do get it. I would rather turn on the TV and be watching it on a Fox or TNT or whatever and hear Barkley's ass, but. You know, let's not let don't get me wrong. You, you, I mean, don't get it twisted. Barkley, if he comes, he's going to want more than he's making now with his gambling ass. He's like me. So he's going to need a little bit of money to, you know, compensate for his losses, too. But but uh, if it went to, so let's say, TNT, since they do the match and they do all these other little golf things, if they if Liv would have come there, though, it'd be a lot easier for him to stay and not need as oh, much. Yeah, he's still yeah, yeah. NBA. Oh, for yeah, sure. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I see what you're saying now. I don't know the 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 whole contract situation with the CW, but I definitely agree. Um, that's not going to cut it as far as being a premier or the premier league in golf. But you know they've got everything else. I think, like you said, that's the only thing that they're really missing is a TV deal. Um, I'm, I've been hearing some stuff with like Fox Sports and shit like that. Uh, I know they were trying to do that originally, and then you know Monahan on the tour stepped in and kind of blackballed them and you know, interfered with that deal. But you know, now that you know, once this the CW one runs up, I think that's a real possibility as Fox Sports or you know, whatever the network is that they were going to stream it on. I'm pretty sure it's Fox Sports, not Fox. But um, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I haven't really got any details on that as far as the TV shit goes. But I'll definitely try to look into it. Um, I'll be in Miami on uh when they're back in the states, so I'll try to dig into that with some people. They got, they got thirty five day. 35 day tour around the world, man. And Pat's like, fuck, it's going to be a long haul for a 48 year old guy. Um, you know, like looking at this field over in Jetta that starts tomorrow. Um, the addition, can you break down the addition of Anthony Kim? That's Pat's boy. They grew up there. They're kind of, Anthony's like the gangster Steve Kim that I have on. Uh, I've, I've known him for a while too. Hasn't played. I think you posted something since you were 12. Yeah, he hasn't played professional yeah. golf since I was 12 years old, bro. So, like, but I'm such a sports nut to where, like, I grew up watching Sports Center, right? That's all. I didn't want to watch cartoons and all that shit. I wanted to turn on Sports Center. So, I mean, I'm somewhat familiar and I've read enough about it. Like, obviously, I know who Anthony Kim is. I remember watching him at the Greenbrier Classic when I was younger back home in West Virginia. But to understand, like, the true like it's almost like a, a legend we haven't seen the dude in 10 to 12 years you know he's been hot i don't want to say hiding out that doesn't because i don't know what the guy's going through yeah a daughter life. he's a daughter you know he had a he had a few things like that i know that some of that and i'll and i'll state the obvious you know you can tell the dude's probably i mean he's probably i don't want to say needs the money but you know look at his facial structure his nose he's probably you know he probably dealt with some personal issues and struggles that you know he's 
you know, we all do, but he's, you know, he's, he's coming out of the light a little bit, you know, he's finally found that light at the end of the tunnel. And I think, you know, from what I'm hearing, he really shit ain't changed. I mean, he's a little older, might swing the club a little slower, but you know, you look at his swing, that shit hasn't changed one bit. You ask anybody that was out on that range, they're going to tell you it was a stripe show. You know, I know he's been hitting a seven iron consistently, 180, 182. So that, that right there for a 38 year old is pretty impressive. So I think, I don't know. I'm not going to, you know, say how he's going to play this week. I don't know how he's going to play this week. Could be five over, could be five under. But, you know, I, I don't know. I think we're going to see, you know, the Anthony Kim, we know. It might take two or three weeks, but I think we'll see, you know, some glimpses of it this week. But, you know, watch out because he's he's not done, man. He's just getting started. You know, we yeah, think, I mean, of, we think of 38, you know, in football or basketball or even baseball is like, you know, pretty much the wit's end of your career, right? But we look yeah. at guys that are – 38 now you know max homa who the pga tour loves to praise and you know really he's never won anything worth talking about in his career he'll be 33 this year so i mean you know most golfers you know i don't know let's mickelson what he was he's 52 he finished second in the masters last year so i think i think ak will be just fine yeah he was really good he was a hell of a ball striker like pat's like dude he's a top 10 like ball striker for a long time and he just went away for 12 years smitty just imagine a cat just disappearing nobody so for him to get the opportunity lives giving him is even a, a blessing in disguise like shit. a lot of eyes i'm sure just one that is just curious more than anything of seeing like w what he's going to be is he the same is he like so yeah i mean and you know he had that insurance policy i guess to where i'm not I, like i said i don't i don't know the full details i guess if he were to come back and play, he'd have to forfeit the 10 to $12 million um, insurance policy that it was. But I guess, you know, Liv kind of came in and said, you know, here's $7.5 million signing bonus. Plus, you know, he's guaranteed to make 150 or 125, whatever it is. Just to step, yeah, just to step on the course. He could show up, hit a ball and say, fuck this shit, I'm out. Make 125 that weekend. So, with yeah. you know, and he's not going to finish last. I hope not. So even if he's top 20, for the rest of the year, plus the 7.5 million and, you know, sponsorships that I'm sure will be racking up for AK. He's going to, you know, make his probably double or maybe, you know, if he's lucky, triple, you know, his what they're doing play. is though, like people don't understand how, Smitty, they, the live has included or implemented regular um, relegation. So it's like basketball or soccer, what they call football over there. Yeah. Like relegation means you go down, obviously. And so they're bringing in more talent and more people, which is going to push guys down. So you got to attain points in a system during the – Pat has points accumulated and shit like that. So people are always on social media. Pat's going to get cut and all these guys are going to get – So, but if you go to relegation, dog, you're offending for yourself. You could be done. Like it's a, it's a cold business how they're doing this. And people don't think that a 30-foot putt, even if you're 10 over, let's just say Pat has a bad weekend, and, but mm -hmm. Pat makes a 30-foot putt for his team to win. Yeah. Those are points accumulated, too, that keeps him out of relegation. People don't think that's pressure. They're out of their fucking mind. That's what people don't understand. There's money on the line every putt, dog. Yeah, people think these dudes are out here just, you know, like, trust me, they're not stressing by any means, but they're still – you know, there's levels to this shit, right? Like Pat doesn't want to win two hundred thousand dollars, and you know he's he's gonna be pissed. He wants to be up there with the rest of them, making the you know the big bucks, right? So, you know, what is it? The top or the last four, last six get uh, get relegated or something like that? Yeah, um, without 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 points though, yeah. And there's no friends in this shit. I mean, look at look at uh, Team Smash. You know, Chase Kepka, Brooks Kepka's brother. I mean, he didn't he didn't cut it. Yeah. Now, whether it's his brother or not, you got to dump him, right? Chase is back on the Asian tour, mini tour, whatever it is. But, you know, he can always work his way back with that, you know, the qualifier that they implemented, which is pretty cool. I guess you can uh, you can qualify to be a wild card. You know, before, the, you, before you get out of here today, who's the favorite? Who you got? Who you picking? Who you going with? Uh, who's the favorite? I got Waco. I know, you know, you know, I've had some people in the DM say, oh, you really went out on a limb there. But I mean, the dude's fucking look at the dude. Waco, I mean, he won that uh, first event at Mayakoba against Sergio. He didn't have a bad showing in Vegas. And then, you know, he's always played great in Jetta. He had a slow first day last year, but then ended up going like six under the second round, four under uh, in the third round. But he just played in Omen last week, had a good showing. He's been playing not only live tournaments, but, you know, Asian tour events, you know, as many events that he can when it's not, you know, just lives week to play that he's still allowed to play on. Uh, he's out there playing with, you know, some of the rest of the Torque members. So I think Waco's form is the best it's ever looked in his career. Uh, he looks the happiest he's been, and he's playing, you know, almost every week, every other week. So um, he's playing in a condition like, 
um, Jetta in my Acoba already, and he's conquered it. So I don't see any reason, you know, why not to take him again. And then um, for the team, I got to go with Crushers. Bryson's due. Uh, if Waco doesn't win, I see Bryson winning or at least finishing second. Uh, the the kids just do. I mean, when somebody's due, especially a player like you know his level, when you know a course as tough as Jetta and as long as it is, and then you also got some crosswinds and stuff. I think. You know, not sure he can overpower it, but uh, like I said, you, you can just feel when somebody's kind of due. So I think he'll contribute to the Crushers. And then you got Chucky Three Sticks, who has, you know, he played lights out in Jetta last year. And then uh, I think Anirban Lahiri is another one that's due. And then, you know, Paul Casey, uh, you know, he's he speaks for himself. So I think the Crushers are are due for a win. They won that uh, the team event last year. So I think they're hungry to get back on top. No doubt. Hey, always a pleasure to have you on. Tee it up Thursdays. Go enjoy the the weekend. And uh, we're going to take a commercial break. We'll be back after this. Uh, Achille, I'll holler at you later on. I appreciate you. All right, for sure. Appreciate y'all. Hit me up. All right, brother. My guy. Bailey, take us away. I got to take a piss. And we'll be back in five. All right, all right, all right. Coach Chef JB is in the uh, bar tending mode tonight. All right, I'm here in the Slapdick Cigar Lounge and Studio, of course, and we got all these goodies, and I'm about to make a Paloma and show you the proper way to make one. Real grapefruit, a real lime, and we're gonna get down and show you all these great things today. Um, All right, first of all, we're gonna take this line. God damn, I'm legit, ain't I? Woohoo, look at that. Wanna put a little bit on the rim, all right? And then you can dip it in this. Or if you don't like the gel, I don't, I'm not a huge fan. We're gonna dip it in that. Now we got our rim. I got the legit Paloma cups and the whole deal. Take some ice, throw it in there. Now, to your drink of choice, or to your strength of choice, I'm gonna put the tequila in first. It's actually a nice, cheap, clean mixer tequila. Much cleaner than Hornitos, I found. Ouch. So, I'm heavy handed as shit. So, I'm gonna put that in there. Gotta get you a squirt. Gotta get you a good old squirt, all right? And we're gonna take a little lime, we're gonna squeeze that lime in there. Bam, all right. We're gonna take a little grapefruit, we're gonna squeeze that real grapefruit in there. It's a real Paloma, by the way. You don't know about these Palomas, this is real deal. Then you're gonna pop this squirt. Then we're gonna stir it up. Damn. Woo! Bob, refreshing fire drink. Real Coach Jeff JB, Paloma Day. Peace. Here we go. Out the oven. Just took it out, all that goodness. Put it on that skillet right there in the oven at the very end for about four minutes. Just to make sure it's thorough. It's about 139, which is a good medium. Uh, slight medium rare on the side a little bit. So I'm sure we'll let it sit for about 10 minutes. We'll cut into it, peace. All right, here we go. We're gonna cut that bitch open. Let's check it out. Ooh, shit. Mm. God damn, look at that. You want to cut where the bone's not, so let's see where the bone is. There we go. So now, we cut that off. That bit's open. This is. Oh my goodness, look at that. Look at this. God damn. That is nice. 
Let me just tell you. I don't even have to hold it. It's so it's so fucking moist and soft. This is barbecued, by the way, not smoked. This will cut your finger right off. Look at this. Ooh. Coach Chef JB. Peace. Beats be banging on a commercial break, man. Well, what's up, y'all? What's going on? Super duper duper excited for this next guest. I've been waiting on him all week long. He pulled up to JB's house last night to turn up. He's finally up. He's at it. About to go to work here soon. Has about 10 minutes. It's the one and only JB's twin brother, Jabrown. Bring him on the show, baby. Jabrown's Hard Truths is next up, man. What's going on, Jabrown, man? The chat's been waiting on you. They want to get that real deal takes and opinions and just the hard truths from you, man. So it's time for your statement. How you doing? I'm good. What up? Hey, I'm doing great, man. Listen, I got a few questions for you that I want to start off with myself. The chat, make sure y'all send in your questions because after I get them with mine, we're going to dive into a few of yours as well, man. So let's start off like this, Jabron. Have you ever been jumped like Cam Newton before? And if you have been jumped, how did you handle it? Nah, because real recognize real. Only bitches get jumped. That's simple. Okay, okay. Let me ask you this then. Are you single or are you in a relationship? Single all day long. Okay, uh -huh. like your brother, like your brother. Let me ask you this. What are the pros and cons of being single? Because your brother, man, JB, he's a huge advocate of being single, being free, and doing what you want. What's your take? What are the pros and cons of being single in your eyes? Freedom. Freedom to do what you want to do. What you mean? That's what I do. We do free shit. We get to do us. us. <laughs> we do us. <laughs> All right, all right. I respect that. Short, flat, skinny, and tall. Huh, we fuck them all. You ever heard that? I've heard that. Sounds very familiar and similar, actually. It must run in the family, certain sayings like that. Well, let, 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 let's get some brass tacks here, Jabron. What type of women do you like? Because there's, there's a few women in the chat, I think, that's been looking at you. They eyeing you. So just so we all on the same page, what type of women does Jabron like? Like, describe that type of woman that, 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 that just meets, meets your eye. Real simple. Short, fat, skinny, and tall. <laughs> we fuck them all. <laughs> That's what we do. We don't have no, uh, you know what I mean? We got a little, you know, we like some stuff. You know, my bro talk about AEs and shit, maybe. We do a few of those, too. But we short, fat, skinny, and tall all day long. We don't care. You got some hard eyes right here from a lady named Lucy, a long-time supporter of our show, Jabron. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Lucy, I like that name, Lucy. I love Lucy. It was a famous TV show. Okay, let me let me switch gears a little bit here, man. Let's kind of um, use your brother as a segue for this next question. Obviously, your brother, man, Coach JB, legendary, all-time great coach. You grew up with him. Um, so tell us this. What are the three keys to being an all-time coach? Like, what did you see from your brother just growing up with him that led to him being so great at his job? <laughs> realness that cat keeps it real all day every day no matter what the scenario is and the kids bought in and everybody bought in coach everybody bought into what he was selling he always had he always got you to buy whatever the fuck he was selling that's what i'll say about him 
Just kept it real. Kept it real. We survivors, man. dog. We survivors. Okay. And speaking of survivors, you know, I know you're you guys are from like Compton, grew up in LA area, things like that. I gotta ask you this, man. There's a lot of wild parties and stuff that goes out on in LA, and there's been a lot of crazy news going on with uh P. Diddy right now. Have you ever been to a Diddy party before? And if so, what was your experience like? Diddy or AE. Is that is that verified? How, how, how do you know? How do you know that Diddy's AE? I'm just curious. Like, is that word on the street? Is that what you're hearing in the streets right now or what? Yeah, we well, got this hard hat to the ground. We know what's going on out here in these streets. Diddy or AE all day. Boys, girls, little boy, everybody. He, he AE. He, he known to be an AE out there. Like, it don't even matter. Dogs, cats, horses. Yeah, Diddy or AE all day long. And he and he also, he take, you know, he he, he like getting pegged. Mm, he likes getting pegged. He, 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 pegged, he a pegger. He like getting pegged. All that AE pegging, all that. Diddy the weird cat. Ask all them cats. You know, Usher and all them cats. They was sweating in the video the other day, and I didn't see no workout equipment. <laughs> mm, that's very telling, Jabron. It is very telling. Well, I appreciate you answering some of my questions. I do want to dive into some of these questions I'm seeing in the chat. Make sure that you continue to throw them out here, man. I'm just going to go through, go through them as I see them. See our main man, Josh, here said, did Jabron play any sports? That's a good question, Josh. I am curious. Did you play any sports? Yeah, I did. We did. I did. I played badminton, golf, soccer. I was a goalie. Yeah, badminton. I was a goalie. I was a goalie uh, in soccer. Uh, Batman's a real man sport. If you don't know what it is, is we gre- we created Batman as a sport in the hood and the street. We had to get super fucked up and loaded, and then play Batman, and then you was hitting cats with your own racket and shit and across the face. It was actually part of the game. Then we'd take you down and, and slam you into the concrete curb. It was part of the game. We called it Batman in the hood. Oh, okay. You kind of created your own rules, kind of how black people like when we play Uno. Every household has their own different rules, so I respect that. Another one right here, man, from my happy days, Coach Jabron. Well, he ain't a coach. This is Jabron. This ain't no coach. But Jabron, has anything pissed you off lately? Yeah, some of these bitch mate, uh, we call them BMKs there in the household uh, in the chat. There's a lot of BMKs in, in the chat this week uh, from what I've been seeing. You know, we, we hard hatters around here. We in the street. I got to go. I got to go pave this street out here uh, on the 110 freeway today. Uh, there's a lot of potholes out here in, in Cali. If you ain't noticed, your potholes, your cars be dipping in there, getting hit, b- popping tire. I got to go do all that. And I've seen a lot of bitch made cats in the, in the, in the chat. So, I, I, you know, I guess this is it's very – because you won't get this hard hat on and come out here and grind with us. Mm. Uh, you won't do that, but you'll, you'll, you'll tweet away at us. It's that all good. It's true. It's that all good. true. I'm going to do like two more questions, man. And I know you got to go to work, man. We appreciate your time. My guy, F.A., right here. Question for Jabron. Have you and your brother ever been with the same woman? Ooh. Nah, we don't cross swords. <laughs> Real easy. We don't do that. We don't get down. You don't get down like that? We don't get down like that. <laughs> we don't even, we don't, we don't fuck with it. <laughs> okay. Okay. AE, I don't know about AE, but, 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 but crossing swords, I don't know. Nah, we don't swords, you don't know about that. Okay, I'm gonna try to ask one more question. Let me see what I got in here, man. What we got in here? Ooh, this is a good one. Let me see. No, not that. Hold on, hold on. Not that one. That's a good one too. Hold on, hold on. Here we go. Jack John, Jabron, who's more gangster? You or your brother? I think I'm a little more like grimy. I went to the hard hat street life, but he 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 might be more gangster though. Cause he 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 tell people some shit. I never would say nothing in public. He'll say it straight out. So I, I'm more like hard hand. I mean, my calluses and shit. JB he more he more gangster with it in the street. I think I'm more like quiet hard worker though. Okay, okay. So you you didn't really game bang, but you but you were you was cool. Like you understand the street. You was hustling. You was fixing cars, doing what you had to do while your brother was out there on the streets doing what he had to do as well. So. Similar but different, I guess is what you're saying. Yeah, 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 yeah. I see this girl in here, Cheer Chris. She said your name is Ja Brown, bro. No, 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 no. It's Ja Brown. That's my name, but we just put it together for the show, Chris. Yeah, 
Chris, stay in your lane. Chris, stay in your lane. Chris, it looks like you a new booty to the show. I don't know you, but you, I see you talking in here a lot. <laughs> mm, mm, okay, you better be. Chris is one of our longtime supporters of the show, so you know what I mean. I don't want you. Then she will come back at you, Jeb Brown. So just be careful. I, I, you know, I just be careful. That's all I'm gonna say. Well, well, last question for me. I noticed when you join the show, you always kind of bob me your head the entire segment. Are you? Do you have like some music in like you're playing right now or what? I got my supervisor talking to me about what's happening. I'm, I'm hearing what's happening on the streets right now. Mm, okay. I'm listening, and that's probably what you're hearing. Plus, I'm ADHD real bad. I got real bad ADHD. Okay. I respect that, man. I respect that, man. Well, listen, I appreciate you for joining the show, man. I know you probably got to clock back in, man. Uh, when can we see you next? Like, Are you going to Are you gonna come back like every week or what, man? Yeah, every week. I do this. I, I told him I do it twice a week. Twice a week, man. Well, yeah. We appreciate you, bro. You know, I told him give me a segment. I want my own segment. Like I want to break down some shit. I want to break down like some like what these kids need to do or something. Like these motherfuckers need to go get their hands dirty. We we giving them too many like YouTube videos and IG models. We need some hands on some shit. We need some trade. We need some trades out there. Fuck college. They need to go learn a trade, how to weld or do some plumbing around here or something. You ever called a YouTuber to come fix your plumbing? Never. <laughs> So fuck college. Is that the message? Fuck college. That degree ain't worth shit. You can wipe your ass with that piece of paper. It ain't getting you no job no more. Shit. You know what it'll get you? A loan. <laughs> All right, man. Well, hey, that's your message for today. Fuck college. Get, go to well school, man. Learn how to use your hands. And uh, there he is, man. Jabrown's hard truth, man. Go ahead and go to work, man. We about to move on to one of our favorite we'll do what y'all won't do. <laughs> hell yeah or hell no, man. Pull the graphic up real quick, man. This is hell yeah or hell no brought to you by Prize Picks, man. Right? right now it's NBA season. You got the March Madness on the way. Make sure you go in to Prize Picks right now. Tell them that Coach JB and Big Smitty sent you. Make your picks on the games and make sure you make some big time money. For those of you who don't know, this is the biggest segment in sports television right now, whether it's TV or social media. Even our guy, Pat McAfee, had to show us some love on his show when talking about that hell yeah or hell no, nah, man. So excited to dive into this, man. I got a few questions, man. Bring us back on. JB is back. JB is back, man. We just had your brother on, man. Love your twin brother, Jabrown. He's a interesting character. He's similar to you, but he's a little bit more serious, though. Like, you're, you're serious, but you could... You could Play around, have some fun. Your bro is just real, just hard nosed, just no bullshit ever. Yeah, he don't he don't laugh or nothing really. Yeah, him and Chris kind of got into it. I was like, Chris is a long time supporter. Chris, who? Cheer, Chris. Oh, really? Cheer, where cheer, Chris been? She just hit and miss though. You know what I mean? You can't be hit and miss and be talking. That's true. That's true. She I got this in blood, that. blood thicker than water. Yeah, I'm gonna tell you this too before we go to hell yeah hell no. Lucy put out some hard eyes for your brother. I don't know what that means, but I'm going to leave that there. A little hard eyes. Chris said, hey, she's going to fight your brown. Uh, we, 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 we know what fight means in the hood. We know what that means for real. You say fight. What that mean? Huh? You know, it mean fight, fight. <laughs> I'm going to get Smitty a job. Smitty, you want to get a job? My brother will hire you. I might have to, man, on the side. I need a little extra money, man. And this, this is one job stuff ain't cut it. So, but we're going to dive into hell yeah, hell no. Nah. Did I start? Who start? Am I starting this off or you starting? Off? I can't remember. I know we go back and forth every single day. It's on me today. I think it's on you today, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Yeah, it's on me today. I heard a rumor out there. I just heard some shit that they're about to give Tua a four year, $220 million contract. What? Four a year? What's 220 divided by four? <laughs> Hold the hell on, bro. I got to do the math. I got to do two. 20 divided by four, 55 a year? And I heard a I heard guarantee 165 and 105 signing. So soon as he signed two attack of a lower, 105. 105 and 165 guaranteed. JB, imagine you signing your name on something, and as soon as you sign it, you get a little cha-ching from Chase Bank, Bank of America, whoever, and the money just instantly go to your account. Soon as you soon as you put Coach J B cha ching 105. Uh, that shit crazy. What would you do with 105 million today? Like right now, today, 105 million. Uh, you'll never know because you'll never see me again. So, anyway, uh, <laughs> 
You know what I do? Real, real shit. If I did hit the lotto, I'm going to go check on the lotto and see if I won this 400 mil. If I won, I'm going to build a crazy ass studio for us. Yeah, it'd be fire. Too. Yeah, I'm going to pay. I'm going to pay to blow up the show. Yeah, put the yeah, money I'm in the marketing, it. billboards, all type of shit. Yeah, I'll sign it off to you. And then I, you know, I'm just going to be the guy. I'm going to be the come on the show and be the show. But I'm going to, the show's going to be boom. Smitty make money. Everybody make money. You got a whole team, whole show. And then I just come on, do the show. And then I'm on my PJ, you know, then back in Scottsdale or Hawaii or wherever. Uh, so, hell yeah, hell nah. Uh, will this finally be the year that the Clippers make it to the NBA Finals? I'm going to answer myself. Hell no, the motherfucking no. Nah. They lost to the Lakers last night up 21. To the HGH-led LeBron James. There's no way that the Clippers can win anything in L.A. They have a thing over them. It's, it's, like, a, it's like an umbrella over the Clippers. That's why I told you, Smitty, the better hell yeah, hell no nah is should they change their name, their colors, their uniform, I would change their fucking whole get down. Like the Miami Heat. Start from gate. This change everything. Like hey, lead, lead a new arena, lead a city, the, do everything. You got the richest owner in sports. Change the name, change the uniform. I'd get out of the blue and red and white. I'd go into like fucking purple, uh, like a light lavender, <laughs> <laughs> lavender and pink. <laughs> well, apparently they, they said he, uh, uh, the owner, like asked the team and stuff like that. They wanted to change their name, and like they didn't want to do it. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I feel like they're doing everything they can to separate themselves from the Lakers. I mean, new a beautiful arena. It's, it's going to be beautiful. Uh, New Jersey. They're doing new everything. Only thing they kept was the name Clippers. So, like, you would think that they would be from they would be removed from that that aura of just negativity and losing. But after what I saw last night, you get outscored by, in a quarter by one player. LeBron outscored the Clippers in the fourth quarter. Forty-seven year old LeBron outscored them in the fourth quarter. What that mean? And I got a clear rub. <laughs> this dude's crazy. I know, a clear rub. A clear rub. You got a clear rub on it. You got a very bomb for that clear rub on it. Like, la, la, la. Oh, Momo, can't, Momo can't make a joke now without taking a shit. KG, listen, we KG from the hood, man. Like hey, hey. Brian Case said, Brian Case gonna be in here in 15 and 10 years from now. We're gonna be in this show doing the show. The show blows us up. We on the show. Brian Case, you know. Grown ass Brian Case, old now. Brian Case, Brian Case probably about thirty five years old. He'd be about thirty five at that time. He gonna come in here like, damn, still hating on LeBron. Can't get no flowers. Give LeBron his flowers, motherfucker. He's on something. He's fifty seven and he still look the same. We gonna be in here ten years, Smitty. LeBron scores twenty one, outscores the whole Clippers, uh, and outscores his son Bronny, and is entering his tenth year in the NBA. If I look at Brian K, still gonna be talking about we hating. <laughs> ah, the thing is, man, I'm from, KG from the hood, man. He out here just talking. You know, you you know, you from the hood, JB. Now you just talking shit. You like that motherfucker? That motherfucker on that balco. He on that. He on them roll. Like he just he, he didn't really mean that, man. Now is LeBron doing something? I don't know. I'm not in this room. I'm not. I I ain't homies with him. But KG was just talking loosely. Cause the thing is, if if he really knew LeBron was on some shit, he wouldn't even say shit because he ain't no snitch. They ain't, ain't how KG grew up. They ain't, they ain't, they ain't, they ain't what he about. You know? Yeah, what I mean? Hell yeah, hell no. Nah. Are the Clippers going to the finals? Hell no. Nah. All right. Thank you. Hell yeah, hell no. Nah. This is more important. The Lakers will miss the playoffs. This is near dear to my heart. I'm gonna say hell no. I'm gonna say they find a way to sneak in. They're gonna win. They're gonna win. They play in. They're gonna become like an AC and lose and losing the first round against the Nuggets or, shit, or the OKC or some shit. But they, they won't miss the playoffs. Hell no. Due to like the the soft nature of everyone getting an award, they I'll probably say hell no. I really, I really just want to say no. <laughs> but right, right. Like I don't want to say hell. It's more like a little like a soft no. Like no. Like Hell a question, no. all. This is the real one, though. <laughs> Opening day, by the way, at Dodger Stadium. You want to come? We're gonna go in the dugout with with with, with Key. 
Go out, go down there with them, fuck with them, go out on the you, field. You, 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 should, you should throw the first pitch. Uh, you'll see me throw that motherfucker across the stadium. I ain't going to Stephen A. Smith that shit. Uh, can, you, can, you, can you pitch? You, you can throw that Ninety. I clocked at 96. Stop lying, JV. College, yeah. Damn, I ain't used a bad boy like that. Yeah, but it's a different, it's a different deal, though. Like you gotta get you, my first pitch ever. I thought I was gonna throw it hundred. That motherfucker was fifty six. I remember it like it was yesterday. I thought I threw my whole shit out because pitching is a whole nother like it's tendons. It's a different part of the arm. Football comes out different. Baseball is a whole nother thing. I had to get used to that shit and train my arm to throw. And then I I hit ninety six. Does does throwing a baseball help or hurt you when you're when you're playing football? Throwing hurt. a football hurt. it hurts it. Got you. <laughs> Interesting. Um, Wooski said I didn't throw 96. Yeah, I know. Because I'm such a liar. All right. Hell yeah, hell no. The Dodgers will win the World Series. Last time we won, I'm going to say weeks. I'm out here. And, and I didn't have a baseball team, so I'm, I'm officially a Dodger fan now. Um, last time we won was the pandemic. Was it 2020 when the Lakers, the Lakers, the Lakers won, I think, and then the Dodgers won? It's 2024. We got upset last year. We brought on Otani. They love Otani. I'm going to say hell yeah. I'm going to say hell yeah because, like, the world needs it, but baseball needs it, and they want it. They want, like, imagine this Otani joins the Dodgers. They go to, you know, he brings them out from, you know, this, the World Series, and he hits the game winning home run. Like, I can see the storyline right now. It just makes Otani even that much bigger. So, hell yeah. Yeah, I'm going hell yeah. It's not even close. The Doyers. Are gonna be they can't if they don't. Roberts better get fired the day of. He bet they better fire him the day they lose if they lose. Hell yeah, the Dodgers are top and bottom the best roster in baseball, the most money. They better win. Uh, I do have Kershaw as one of my most overrated athletes ever, though, because of what he does in the playoffs. Uh, Brian Casey makes a good point. He said Otani not pitching this year though. Kershaw will choke in playoff. See, my thing is Brian. Maybe Otani's not gonna be pitching majority of the year. I, I, I know they said that, but. Push comes to shove. If Kershaw's fucking around in the playoffs, y'all don't think Otani's like, you know what? Fuck it. They put him, they put him in there for a game. They bring him out. You know what I'm saying? Like, at the end of the day, you got to win. So we'll see. Yeah. Um, yeah. They're really on your head, JB, about that 96 mile per hour. Like, they really like, look at Travis Johnson. Man, they really mad about that. They pissed like, off. They like, that shit is affecting their day. Like their whole day is ruined. They gonna go to work like, like man, like pissed off. Like, what's what's wrong with you, Travis? Man, motherfucking, you know JB from Last Chance Shoe? Yeah, the, the white dude from Compton. Yeah, motherfucking lying talking about he threw a, a baseball nine six miles per hour. That shit got me pissed off. She got me hot. <laughs> Motherfuckers really be affecting their shit, homie. That shit is. God. We be ruining their whole days on this show hey, boy, in the morning. The wild man cat we blocked was really hot about Matt. Interviewing Dion like that motherfucker's whole day is fucked up. Then he got blocked, and then he, he made was it typing so he fast. Blocked. JB, like he was typing so fast in there, motherfucker. He, I kept seeing nothing but him on the show. Soft ass questions. You love Dion? What the fuck? Why you like crying like, so much? Damn. You fan? You kiss ass? I'm like, damn, bro. Like, what the hell? <laughs> I'm like, god damn, homie. I mean, this shit affecting your life. I ain't seen him in the ch in the chat for months. Right. Damn. I'm like, damn. damn and Daniel, Daniel said I wasted a membership on that fool. Well, you know right out the gate, if you had to buy him one, you already knew he's a bitch made cat dog. Come on, Daniel. So how about this? How about Daniel? Why don't you buy one for like my, my main man, Keith, my cousin? He's loyal to the soil. He's in here every day. Buy one for Keith. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, get like a get that big titty motherfucker something. Let's get into some. I got some women like big dudes. JB. We got some top of the world to go through, and I hope, I hope you got Bill Russell on this motherfucker too. I hope, I hope Bill Russell's on every one of your lists. I'll like, put him Bill on every list. Top quarterback. I'm, I'm about to reach out to Bill Russell and say, "Fuck, you got one of the all time." R.P. to the legend. Yeah, hey, rest in peace. God damn it. Uh, you know it's crazy. I was just with that dude before he passed away too. It's crazy. That's life, uh, man. Life him, Doctor J, the Pump Brothers. Got to see, man. You know, he's always at the Pump Brothers thing. He is six ten though. He not six seven. Yeah, uh, no, yeah. I, listen, he's listen. Prime time athlete. Listen, I think when we say overrated, I think it has like a bad rap. In some situations, like for example, I have Ben Simmons on my list. 
that's like a negative overrated. That's like motherfucker didn't even come close to what they were saying he was supposed to be. Bill was an all-time great winner and changed the game, but he's overrated to me in the sense that he's not a top five NBA player. You know what I'm saying? Like that, like that's what I mean by like he might be top 20, 25, but like be real, JB. Do well, you well, think what's Bill, the difference though between that and what coach coach said to you though? Like Tom Brady's not top five skill set of all time at quarterback. But Tom, but listen, Tom, it's error that Tom played in the right era, number one, against other greats in, in number one. Number two, Tom has carried some teams where it's like Tom didn't always have some legendary team every single year. That's made, that's, don't get it twisted. And that's man. why Belichick's the GOAT. Their defense won him two Super Bowls. And Bowl. I'm saying Brady had, other than the year when he had like Moss and all that shit, Brady didn't always have some sort of crazy like receivers on the outside. Brady made average guys become great. You know what I'm saying? Like clutch moments, clutch back. And Brady has the stats too. It's not, it, it ain't like Brady just got rings and no and no stats. And he Bill has the Russell's stats, the rings, longevity. All time. Is Bill Russell top 50 all time? Top 50? Yeah. Yeah, he's top 50. And how is he overrated? Hold on, but people don't, hold on, JB. And maybe me and you see different lists. I don't be seeing him top 50. They say he's top fucking five and 10. They have him in front. You, you know what my big problem is? I'm going to be real with you. A lot of people got him in front of Bean, Kobe Bryant. Be real, JB. From what oh, you've seen of Bill Russell, should Bill be in front of Kobe? Be real. We're going to do that list right now. Let's do that list. Let's do it. We're gonna Let's do, do the top of the world. We didn't get to it yesterday. We got a top of the world list to get to today. And you want me to go first or you? You're first. Let's go top of the world because yesterday you did. NBA players, the best of all time. Number five, I'm going with the cap. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. The guy is, I mean, he's arguably the best basketball player in general because what he did in high school, college, NBA, the man won in every single level. Got a ring before he joined the Lakers, so it wasn't just just on magic. Kareem is that guy, was the all-time leading scorer for 20-plus years. Amazing. Number four, I'm going with his teammate, though, Magic Johnson. The name says it says it in itself. We don't even call him Irving no more. We just call him Magic because of how great he was on that court. He was an all-time great facilitator, leader. He won a championship in L.A. his rookie season. Who does that? Who does that? Nobody, man. So you got to show respect and love to Magic Johnson. Number three, we're going with LeBron James, man. All-time leading scorer, longevity. Um, When he gets done playing, he's going to probably be top five in like Scoring, passing, rebounds, and everything, man. A guy who has four rings, you know, been the 10 chips. When he was on the East, he kept a lot of people out from the NBA Finals because he kept beating them. Um, freak athlete. I got him number three on my all-time list. Number two, none other than Kobe Bean Bryant. Now, Kobe is my, like, individual. Like, that's my favorite player. That's who I grew up watching. The man can do it all. One of, if not the most skilled player in NBA history, can do it from anywhere on the court, mid-range, streak, can triple threat, can post you, he can cross you up, drive to the basket. He's clutch, free throws, rings, everything you could possibly think of, man. Kobe Bean Bryant has done it and, and did it at a very high level. But number one, the man's shoes are still selling at an all-time high level, man. Michael Jeffrey Jordan. To me, him and Kobe are damn near identical, but Kobe, but Jordan was just slightly better in multiple categories. Has more rings. You know what I'm saying? He, he was more efficient, bigger hands, slightly better defender. Like, just slightly better in, like, a handful of categories where – I got to give him a slight edge. Plus, I also know, even hearing from Kobe, Kobe's, when, he, when Kobe's asked this question, he's like, listen, I'll never put myself in front of MJ because I learned so much from MJ. That's what I'm saying, man. So there we go. Latrell, listen, because it's different between being real. This list right here, it's just like, this This is my real, like, this is what I factually believe. For Latrell example. defending you, and then he'd be going, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, Latrell, got, no, good person, Latrell. Like, in football, Pey Peyton Manning is like my like my individual goat, but I can't I can't with logically put him in front of Brady. Like I can't do that. Like Brady won fucking seven rings, beat uh, Peyton so many times. You know what I'm saying? So like my personal favoritism is Peyton. My personal favoritism is Kobe. That's who I grew up on. But when I look at the facts and look at the fact that 
Kobe took so much of his game from Jordan, I can't put him above him. So that's that's the explanation. I don't agree with anything you said about Kobe Jordan's comparisons about slightly better. I think Kobe took his shit and you all everybody has a fucking person they look up to. I think Kobe took Jordan's shit and made it even better. But we're gonna dive into let me get in my list real quick. Top of the world. Number five. Your list was racist, by the way. Number five, we're gonna come straight out the gate. And I'm gonna use I'm gonna put Magic Johnson at five for being a versatile guy. Um he never got HIV, by the way. That was all a lie. Magic Johnson, I'm putting him at number five right out the gate. Number four, I'm going straight to the man he beat in college, but who he did not. Uh, Larry and Magic used to go at it. I got Larry Legend. Larry Bird, Na- uh, Indiana. French Lick, Indiana. Indiana. Nap time, you know, baby. You don't even put him on your list. You don't even put a Larry Bird on your list from Indiana. No respect for your home he state. Top 10, he top ten. He top ten. He top, top ten. Five. Larry Bird's top five. There's no question. Magic, about how it. you got him above Magic? And Magic beat him more times than it. he. Magic won five in the eighties. Bird only won three. And Bird team had like five Hall of Famers too. So you can't say it was a team thing. Larry Bird's the best. Larry Bird number four. Racist. Number three. Larry Bird's so underrated as a passer, as a rebounder. People don't give Larry Bird any credit. They think he's a slow white. He couldn't play now, but look at what Luca's doing. <laughs> um, so I had to put a white guy on the list straight out the gate. Larry Legend. Number three, who I can argue is the best of all time. And I have argued it, and I can make sense with it. Number three, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. I have him a lot higher than most other people. Kareem should be in the top. I don't understand. He's never really lost in anything ever like <laughs> ever <laughs> like high school college like before it gets his eye patch if he don't get his eye fucked up he don't lose <laughs> to houston people don't realize he didn't lose in college like it, i i don't understand how you don't understand how great this dude was kareem abdul jabbar uh number three uh number two i got michael jordan and then number one i got kobe kobe's my guy and he's my best guy not like you say, he's my guy, but he's not number one. Ah, uh, He's my guy, and he's my best guy. Uh, straight out. Kobe's the best. Are you saying ever. that with, with no bias in your heart, being from, like, L.A., being from out here? Like, is this, like, zero bias at all? Because I know you probably didn't. He's not even from L.A. cat. If he was L.A. cat, I could see that. But he's a Philly cat overseas. I mean, yeah, but, like, he he, he spent 20 years in L.A. Like, that motherfucker, oh, yeah, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Like, I'm saying, to me, listen, I'll stand on this hill. I'm going to die on this hill. He's the greatest and I've got to see Magic, Bird, Kareem, Jordan, Bar- Barkley. Yeah. Barkley would be my number six, by the way. That's how high I am on Barkley. At 6'4". He's barely. underrated, actually, too. He's very underrated. Uh, he's the most underrated player. Skill set-wise, Charles Barkley's the most he's underrated. Dribble, coast to coast, dunk nature. on you, physical, rebounder. Like, he did everything, yeah. Kobe, to me, the game changed. I can argue that... Jordan changed the game. Yeah. But Kobe played in the game that got changed from what Jordan gave the NBA. Right. Then they went to no then they went to a thing called Remember Jordan played it was illegal defense. You had to play man. You could not switch and play zone. It's called illegal defense. You get a free throw. Kobe had to play with zone defense A had to share the ball with the most dominant player of all time, ball dom- ball dominant and dominant in Shaquille O'Neal. Jordan never had to share the rock with another offensive ball dominant player ever. And if somebody says Steve Kerr and Craig Hodges, I'm going to slap the fuck out of you. He had Luke Longley and Bill Winnington. If you compare those two to Shaquille O'Neal, then you know right now that you don't know fucking basketball. Hefe. The problem is, so I, you know I'm with you. I'm not going to even argue with you, but the, just give you the counter side Hefe to that. don't know basketball. I just dropped so many knowledgeable things on Hefe. He's over there like, damn, JB knows basketball? This is the cold part, Smitty, and I know I cut you off. This is the thing. Kobe had to share the rock and Still get MVP, still win rings. And when Shaq left, he won two more. Shaq, see, the problem is real quick. So, like, I'm with you. I'm with you. But 
Kobe didn't win no finals if he pees the first three rings. Shaq got all three of them. Of because Although Kobe's numbers, at least for two of the rings, was fucking right there, par, par. The, 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 the first ring, his numbers would look like, like they always look at Kobe as the number two on those first three rings. We don't. We look at it like 1A, 1B, however you want to do it. But a lot of people do. So the, the, the thing that you're using to actually help Kobe, people use that to actually go against him, saying, well, you have fucking Shaq. No wonder you have three rings in a row. But here's the thing. People always talk about, oh, Kobe shot the ball. Blah, 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 blah. Dog, if I, if Kobe had all wing defenders like Jordan had and all he had to do was score, like, get the fuck out of here. Kobe had to guard the best player on offense, on defense. He had to hit the game winner on a, many occasions, big time shots with people yeah. in their face. He arguably had to share a ball. Both of them had to have at least 30 touches in a game, like fucking running backs. And... <laughs> You got a guy in Jordan who could de- who could depend on Pippen and Rodman and Horace Grant locking it down and get him the ball. Like yeah. I wish Kobe had that type of shit. But see, people don't really realize all that. But it is you're right. Is. Jordan has so much freedom. Kobe talked about that too. He's like it's hard to compare because like our our starts were even different. Like Kobe got drafted yeah. and had to be come off the bench behind Eddie Jones and had to like wait his time. So like even when you compare stats and numbers, Kobe first couple of years he he didn't even have a chance to really get busy. When you look at a LeBron or Jordan, well, whatever, headed the Jordan team. played college, right? Jordan right. played college. He's much more mentally tra- trained, physically was more adapt, ready to go in the NBA. Kobe had to learn that shit at 17 years old. I even argue though, if Kobe would just, if they just said, fuck it, Kobe, go. His rookie year, I bet, I bet, shit, I bet his numbers would be a lot higher too. Points yeah, game, by, 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 by week 10 in the NBA, he would have been balling. You know what I'm saying? And, and look, respect to Eddie Jones. Eddie Jones at the time was a fucking all-star too, don't get me wrong, but he wasn't Bean. You know, he wasn't fucking Kobe. So it's like, you know, um, it's a good argument, man. It's different eras. And Kobe, I would say Kobe arguably played against better, at least shooting guard talent, in my opinion. We can argue that. That's that's, that's very just opinionated. I get it. But I'm saying Kobe had to go against the, the prime Vince Carter and Tracy McGrady and AI and, like, some of our all – D-Wade later, like, some of the all-time great guards he had to go against. And, again, Jordan went against some guys, so I'm not stupid. Like, I, I get yeah, – Isaiah's point guard, but Isaiah and – Allen Houston, Latrell Speedwell, some of those guys. But I just think when I look at the levels of it, I'm like, I don't know. Kobe played against some guys. Like, he played against, you know, and he played in the air when the Spurs was fucking super dominant. You know what I'm saying? Like, he played in the Western Con- Conference that was extremely hard. Extremely hard. You know hey, Chris, saying? we're about to start doing spaces. We're going to start doing spaces at night on – uh when we figure it out, we're going to start – We should do Twitter start. spaces, and we should also consider trying, like, IG Live. We've never done the IG Live before either. Similar yeah. concept. You know what I'm saying? Similar concept. IG Live. Yeah, that's a video, though. I, space is just voice. Yeah, I know, but he's all right. Motherfuckers want to see you. Motherfuckers, girls yeah. want to see your face. Hey, that's what this is. Uh-huh. One thing, you know, we it might be a thumbnail for tomorrow unless, unless we already got one, but F.A. saying, like, you need to explain why you got Charles Barkley in front of LeBron. That's one thing I, I, I didn't really – we ain't really touching on him. You ain't got LeBron in your top five. And then you said number six is Charles Barkley. So, like, that might be the thumbnail tomorrow. Charles Barkley number, and LeBron. Then number, number seven is <laughs> Isaiah Thomas. And then number eight is Tim Duncan. <laughs> and then number nine, <laughs> I, I'm just saying, you want me to keep going? I, I, have you heard LeBron's name yet? <laughs> I, I, I keep, I keep going too. I keep going all day long. By the How way, what you say? What you say? How are you gonna go? Number nine, I got Kim Olajuwon. Number ten, I got Patrick Ewing. I keep going. Hey, my fucking, my fucking like number thirty nine. I got Booby Gibson. <laughs> Number 11, I got Bernard King. <laughs> Number 12, I got motherfucking uh, uh, Kevin hey, McHale. Kevin hey. McHale. Number 13, I got motherfucking – I mean, I can keep going. That's hey, the- hey, hey, 17, I got Ky- Kyrie Irving. <laughs> Make the shot. I don't think LeBron's a top five Laker of all time. Oh, yeah. I, I don't – listen. How, how, how is he a top five player if he's not a top five Laker? So so is, 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 is LeBron better than Akeem? I mean, I'm sorry, then Kareem, no. Magic, no. Worthy, no. Kobe, no. I could keep going down the list on the Lakers. Micah, no. I could keep going down the list. And he's I, not better than – I'm with Lakers. you, though, but it, you, you got to look at it differently, though. These are cats who spent either the, their entire or majority of their career in, in a purple and gold uh, 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 jersey and uniform. 
I don't look at, at LeBron as a Laker. Now, will he probably get a fucking re- uh, uh, jersey retired or some shit? Probably so, because, like, they want to use that name as, you know, it's good to say you had Kareem, LeBron, Kobe. It's just a good branding thing. But I don't look at LeBron as a Laker. He's a Cavalier, really, at the end of the day. And you could say a Heat, kind of, because he spent time hey, here. But like, here's a cold part, though. Like, this Wooski cat is a ball-swinging LeBron fan. He said the Lakers were hot garbage for half a decade before he came. Besides you were bad. the bubble championship, what has the Lakers done with LeBron? You know his overall record? 190 and 140. You fucking dick-riding, non-statistical fuck. He's done nothing either. He has a bubble championship. The Lakers have been an eight seed every other year. What do you mean? What the fuck? You act like the Lakers have come in and been the best team in basketball since he left fucking Cleveland. Shut up, Wooski, you fucking dick rider. And God. real quick, you're not. Are you saying James Worthy is lit, like literally better than LeBron, or are you saying with the Lakers, like James Lakers. Worthy with the Lakers? Lakers? Got you, got you. I was, I'm with you on that. I ain't gonna lie, shit. I, I, I would say fucking Derek Fisher's better as a Laker. In my, I mean, I, I did. And by the way, I did say that the bubble championship was real. What yeah. the fuck does that have to do with my point that the Lakers have been eight seeds every year? What does that have to do with anything? You act, you just said they've been shit for 10 years. They still are shit. <laughs> what, what have they changed? They won a bubble championship for, what, year two or three with him. They've done nothing since. So show me why, how, how have they become so great. <laughs> and they're doing it in a softer era, softer league, and you got AD who has done nothing. Get out of here with that shit. And he's on, on your head. He said... You said he hasn't done nothing, dot, 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 other than his championship, LOL. <laughs> if you get a oh, ring, that, that kind of like solidifies everything. Though. I said the bubble championship. Y'all you said did. the bubble championship you wasn't said, shit. You said you think it was harder. The same guy that said the bubble championship wasn't shit. <laughs> right. I, I, I think it's a little bit of an asterisk, so to speak, but you've always said it was harder yourself. Yeah, it was. Your I, and I've talked to people that played. I'm always going to take their word. And then, and then, if a guy plays the NBA and fucking played in the regular playoffs and then went over there and told me that that shit was way fucking harder, I think I'm taking the guy that actually played fucking Yeah, but ball. other motherfuckers who also played said it wasn't harder. It's all perspective. To me, the Lakers was an old veteran-led team. It's I'm actually- talking about from the winner, though. I'm okay, talking I'm about you, to me- side, The loser's going to always say, oh, I wasn't shit. The winner side, though, I'm taking that word. But they're going to always say it was harder to enhance their fucking ring, too, though. But they but- the validation. They won. But what I'm saying is, though, I feel you. Right? Like It's all perspective. My thing is that 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 team was a veteran old Laker league. Dwight Howard, AD, LeBron, R- Rondo, all these old heads. So for them, it's a way easier for y'all to be in one location, no fucking traveling, no outside distractions. Y'all are mature. Y'all have already partied and turned up and did all that shit. So it's easier for y'all to just hone in on just basketball for a fucking month compared to a young team who was probably actually better than y'all w- w- when it was the regular season, regular NBA. You put them in a fucking bubble. They don't know what to do. They fucking panicking. They want some pussy. They can't do that. They can't see that. The the all type of shit going on. Exactly. So I'm saying it was. It, it gave AD like a month. It took off like a month and a half of fucking games. So AD could just heal. LeBron could stay healthy. So I'm exactly. saying an older team, the bubble benefit. You're with me. You're, You're going to yeah. killing Wooski's fucking. No, I, but I've always said that it wasn't the same and it wasn't it wasn't harder in my opinion. Yeah. You're Lakers. killing Wooski's on his argument right now. By the way, this is the play in era. <laughs> you play. Yeah, you need a fucking play in, and you're talking about what they've done ten years in a row. This is the play in era. We got to go, though, man. It might be a good conversation for tomorrow to start the show with, though. We see the hey, emotion. I, I right got one there. question, though. When did Kobe, bottom line, go back to that, just get jumped over by every fucking body? That's what I want to know, and I want to know why. I know why, because he hit that white girl in the ass, and that's straight up what it is. He hit the white girl in the ass. She was at a party literally two days later in Vegas where Shaquille O'Neal attended. No, oh, allegedly. No, it happened. I know, and yeah. it happened. Huh. I saw it. She was at the party, the same broad who claimed he did what he said, he, what she said he did. No, you wanted it in the ass, and you got it, 
and Kobe hit that air, and later on you were butt hurt, literally and figuratively. And then guess what? You want to claim some but bullshit. I, but I actually feel like people move past that though. Like, like, oh, because that I happened like oh six, and I since then Kobe won two more fucking rings. Like, people nah, gotta move past that. I just think people love LeBron so much that they just act like, like, based upon his longevity, that you just came and put Kobe in conversation no more. Like, here's the crazy, crazy part though. They never moved past it because Steve Nash wouldn't have got MVPs. They did. They held Kobe down for that very fact that yeah, he but was. That, but the MVPs happened right after that shit. The, like the next two seasons, it was like 07, 08, If I'm not mistaken, so I'm, I'm saying I'm saying over the I'm saying by the time fucking Kobe was about to retire, motherfuckers wasn't talking about this case. Like this shit wasn't getting brought up. Is what I'm saying. No, I I get that, but everything that he's been jumped over. By LeBron, jumped over by certain guys, never won an MVP in the finals because why? I'm gonna give it to Shaq over this guy because this guy allegedly did this. Like there was a a cloud over him, regardless of what you want to think, dog. Don't sit here and tell me you don't no, think that it, it, it was a cloud, but I think the cloud was from like 06 to maybe till 10 or some shit. That, 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 they, that cloud's for life. You think when so? When it comes to voters. Voting that's for life. That Good ain't point. no that ain't no uh, I forgot that happened. That is for life. Kobe got fucked over for life on that bullshit. He got fucked over to this day. He's getting fucked over to this day by people jumping over how great he was. They don't even discuss it because if he has this night. Look at me. Right. Come on, man. I, I'm the devil. Cause what you saw. But before Netflix, I was the greatest thing ever. Me and Addict said, relax. He said, when Kobe and Shaq played together, Shaq was the more dominant player. We all know that. Because he's 7'9", 380, you fucking idiot. Well, he's saying in reference to, like, Kobe should have got, like, one of the MVPs in the finals or something. They're saying, well, fucking Shaq was having 35 and fucking 17. Shaq, Kobe was having 29, 8 and 8, but Shaq was having 35 and fucking 17. All yeah. went through Shaq. So, so they're saying that, no, he didn't get screwed over. Shaq actually, like, should have won him, you know? I, I look at it like Shaq, Kobe was a team player, and he could have fucking tried to sh jack up more shots and not got that if he was such the, the guy you claim he was. I right. say he actually got Shaq those fucking championship uh, honors. I'm with you because people thought, like, Kobe was, like, a fucking, like, like, like a number two. Like, like, that, like, Kobe was, like, Kyrie <laughs> to LeBron, or Kobe was, like, you, you know what I'm saying? That, like, Kobe was, like, fucking... Who's all time great? Like Kobe was pipping to Jordan. Like, hold on, bro. Like, no, this motherfucker, this was alpha, alpha. <laughs> this was none of that. That's why they didn't get along. Right. Exactly. Now that that first ring, I'll give it a little bit more to towards Shaq. Cause if you look at numbers, Kobe was coming into like that was the first year. Like, okay, Kobe's on like gonna be the shit. But them say if you look at like look at actual numbers, the 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 the, the last two rings of, of the three peak. Oh my god! Like Kobe was fucking look at look at his playoff stats. Look at the moments. I, I think about the Pacer game when Sha when Shaq fouled out and and everybody was panicking and Kobe was like, "I got you, relax." And he took over the game and won. Like it's so many moments like that where we overlook. It's like no, Kobe won series. Kobe won games. Like they get the Spurs. They score hundred points right now. I'm telling you right now, he would score hundred points with fucking ease. Right. I mean, now. he scored eighty fucking one in the era where they played defense. He, so he'd like, score hundred yeah. a fucking. Uh, he'd probably score a hundred a once a week. He could have scored a hundred. You remember the game he scored sixty something in, in three quarters? quarters? Yeah, in three, against the Mavs, and they took yeah, him out because they were beating their ass. Game. Yeah. I know. Easy. You know, I uh, changed my list. Jordan number two, Bean number one. Fuck it. The more, I'm, the more I'm thinking about it, B was a bad boy, JV. That motherfucker B was different. He the best, I'm telling you, ever. He's the best ever. And by the way, I think Iverson, McGrady, uh, would all score 100 now. Like, uh, they, they couldn't stop any of them motherfuckers. Like, there's no way. He scored 60, what, one or 60 on his last game against, like, 60. like he was dying out there. What was he, 40? <laughs> Old as hell. Come on, man. I don't get it. Go, JB, man. We gave y'all some extra time. We gave y'all 10 minutes of extra time, man. And y'all ain't even hit the like button, man. Y'all don't give a fuck about us, man. But we still gonna love y'all. We gonna always show love and give y'all our best foot forward. Pound the like. It's Thursday. Tee it off Thursday. Shout out to all our amazing guests. Thirsty Thursday. I'm gonna give me a drink real quick before this meeting. I'm gonna get drunk. Okay, okay drink. I'm gonna give me a, uh, probably give me a little tequila. A little tequila Sprite. Go do that real quick. Um, 
I, I, I have to be a little tipsy before I have a big time meeting. So I'm going to do that and then uh, go to work. We're dark tomorrow from my show. Thank God. So today's my Friday from Fox. And uh, um, you should be have this tomorrow show should be like a full production, full on. Fucking this shit should be off the chain tomorrow. I'm wait, I can't wait. No excuses. Like you should then or give her like for four thirty in the morning. Drive out. That's, that's me. That's me at the studio. Let's fucking do the whole show fucking live. After we get done, we'll get some breakfast, talk shop, go from there. Oh, you should come out here and do the show I live. We, no, I said no, motherfucker. Oh, uh, we do it in the lounge and I cook breakfast. You Let's never go. come to LA, Dave. It's very rare. I always come to your, your, your You're running the show. Your turn. I got the camera on me. I'm making breakfast and shit. I got some AEs. It's your let, let's meet. Let's meet in uh, Long Beach. Let's go to your boy restaurant. He open up early. Go back there. We'll do a live shit in the kitchen. They bring us out the, the dessert. We bring we bring out the waitress. You cuss her out. Food come late. Let's do the whole nine. Hey, trainings ain't open at no six in the morning. Well, you they will. <laughs> what you talking about? You coach JB, motherfucker. Uh, uh, shout out to Matt coming on. Um, Steve Kim, Akili, everybody else. We'll be here tomorrow. Uh, back on it. And uh, much love to everybody. Don't worry about the chat, Smitty. You 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 looking at the chat too? Uh, Cheer Chris talking about the IE and OC now and Scottsdale. Hey, it is what it is. You know what I'm saying? I got some AEs hitting me up. So we got some shit going on TikTok. We'll see you tomorrow. Pound the like, eat a dick, and then we'll see you guys uh, later on tomorrow in 21 hours. Time forbid, gives, allows, whatever. Uh, we're going to do some spaces maybe. Lucy, we might be doing some spaces. We might have to try some spaces, dog. It's many bullshit. I'm going to have to try some spaces. I might just hop on there. I don't even know what to do. I don't even know how to turn it on. But we'll figure it out. And uh been a great week so far, back. I said a lot of people don't know we're back, I don't believe, because I'm still getting a lot of messages that, oh, you're back live? And, uh, you know, it takes a while, algorithm. I don't know. But we've had three double-digit views week this week so far. We'll see if this one will get it. But the last three days have been – 15,000, Smitty, 14,000, 12,000. So it's that part's going up. Even the view, the live views ain't up though. I don't get it. I don't give a fuck about the live view. I, I care about the overall views, honestly. It could be two people watching this shit live, but if a million people watch it overnight, that's all that matters. <laughs> Maybe I need a white coat. I didn't drive white coat. You should try it out for like, like do a white coat for Monday, Tuesday, and then try me Wednesday, Thursday, and then get a Mexican for the, the Thursday, Friday, and see which two day span is the best. Your show is racist from a job. I, 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 I've pushed so hard to make the show. It's, it's not racist now, but it used to be racist as fuck. And I had to push those motherfuckers out. All of them left. This show this show used to be nothing but rhymes in here. It used to be just, it used to be just crazy, just racist. He said racist as fuck. R-A-F. All right, we out of here, man. Bailey, take us away. Pound the like, man. See you tomorrow. Issues get pressed so past it, don't get sacked like bags and baggage. Smitty and Jason Brown killed the AS a rap. We want the games been missing, we